Jay Crawford, Adam the Bull, Garrett Bush, Tyvis Powell, Jason Lloyd. Plus, ba da 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 you're loving him, Mikey McNuggets. And so many big names, it would take me hours to say all of their names. The ultimate Cleveland sports show starts now. Booyah! <laughs> Welcome, one and all, to the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Tyvis and Jason and me, none of us were here yesterday. We're all here today. And I'm not talking to Bull today until, until he changes his mind on Tyvis, the rule change. like every other defensive player in the world, is worked up about this hip drop, drop tackle, which nobody understands and will not be a big factor. But uh, Bull's, Bull hurt my feelings. I, I, Tyvis, I love you, but I, my, the reason I was angry, we'll get to it later, <laughs> is because everybody makes such... Every time there's a rule change, that whining baby J.J. Watt is on, on Twitter saying, let's put play, have them play flag football. We'll get to it later. J.J., JJ you get, you're making $25 million a year or you were. Shut the hell up. Nobody cares what you think. All right. Tyvis can complain. He didn't make $25 million a year. Uh, he made more than the rest of us, though. I mean, you're still in the Facts. NFL, for crying out loud. Facts. You made some big-time money. Facts. Hopefully, you took care of it. Of course you did. Unlike other people I know. No, I, I, went to, I went to Magic City. <laughs> <laughs> this one down the street or the one in Atlanta? <laughs> well, the one down the street, you might be, you got to have some change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you weren't spending that kind of money at the one down the street. That is, that's a nickel and dime special right there. That's like popping in a quarter for the peep show. You, know what I mean? you folks know what I mean. Don't pretend like you don't know what I'm talking about. All right, a lot to get to today are Kevin Stefanski and Andrew Berry close to contract extensions. Uh, The Cavs finally won a game. And by the way, this hashtag, let them know, is congratulations, is one of the dumbest things I've ever seen in my life. You don't like that. I am never going to tweet hashtag let them know. Let him know what? That you suck right now, but you have <laughs> one win over a shitty team? Hey. Let him know. <laughs> and the only thing dumber than hashtag let him know is this idiotic chain that the team is passing around. The junkyard dog chain. The junkyard yeah, that, dog that, chain. That, that should have been retired after that last year's That is embarrassing. No wonder they're going to lose in the first round of the playoffs. Wow. With that stupid <laughs> chain and the stupid let them know. It there it is. It well, was so let them know. How do you feel about hashtag for the land for the Guardians? Awful. That's almost Man. <laughs> you, you ain't you're like, what, nah. about, what about hashtag dog pal? Okay. I'm okay with that one. The problem is that idiot son-in-law of Haslam <laughs> has been talking about the dog pound for years as if it's the whole stadium. And it's not supposed to be the whole stadium. It's supposed to be one section, and that section doesn't exist anymore. The dog pound died in 1995. Exactly. Mm. And you got to change when they it. they left the stadium, the dog pound left with them. Yeah. Well, that, yes. And for the land, actually, is not that bad. Well, I was just on a roll of saying everything sucked. Well, we'll be that's talking. okay. But <laughs> let them know is so stupid. Uh, Beyond how, stupid. How do you feel about the Cavs' new practice facility? Is that stupid? A too? half a billion dollars? No. A half, well, how much? <laughs> no. Ah, what's wrong with you? Thought, how much no. is it? Seventy billion dollars? No. Eighty? Ba- Where's it enough? By the way, is Dan Gilbert going to pay for this whole thing himself? Bull, him well, in the clinic. In the then clinic, I don't clinic. care. Good for them. <laughs> it's in the ninth. <laughs> I, I give Dan Gilbert credit. He's a lunatic. He's a meddler. He's an over manager. But if he pays for his own facility, I got respect for that. It's, Jimmy uh, Haslam, whoa. the guy's a freaking billionaire. He's looking for a handout from all these poor people living in the city. <laughs> what a disgrace. Boy, Him and his you dopey woke, family. You woke up on I am here today. out of control right now. You know what? This, this am I going to get sued like Kim Mulkey? What the hell's her name? I hate that woman. The lady from LSU. LSU She's LSU. an idiot, too. <laughs> I can't wait till that. I... I wouldn't even have cared about that story. I wouldn't have known anything the about it. Now I'm going to read it. Yeah. I'm going to laugh at her. I don't even know yeah. what happened with that. The- Nobody knows, but the fact that she came out and said, I'm going to, I've hired a defamation lawsuit. I'm going to sue has brought way yeah. more attention to the story than ever <laughs> than it could have been. Than it otherwise would have. Right. Jason, real quick, though, you mentioned the Cavs' new practice facility. Tell us a little bit about what's coming to the West Bank of the Flash. They're introducing it now, actually, down at the down the street. Uh, yeah. We're going to talk about it later on the podcast tonight. Yeah. Uh, it's in the nine figures. No one's given releasing exact figures to the well, if they're deal, paying for it then but it it's matter. in the it's 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 going to be unbelievably nice it's 200,000 square feet 210,000 yeah. square feet 
The cool thing is there's a public component to it. So it's the Cavs facility in that. Uh, I was going to say, because why would fans care? Well, this but is why they care. It's so in the they're, flats. They're leaving independent. Well, it's not really the flats. It's, mm. it's, it's, it's where the casino is supposed to be, actually. Like phase two of the casino that never got built. Mm. It's the land that Dan has owned and has sat on for over 10 years. So they're yeah. going to put this facility there. And they're leaving independence. They're going to move to this. And the public component, if you are a, if you're a golfer, right, you're an avid golfer, yeah. you can go in here, I'm sure you got to pay for it, and they will, like, analyze your swing, like the biometrics of your swing and see. Sounds like something definitely for the common man, yeah. But, but you can. I mean, like, <laughs> like you, would, you don't even want to know how much money we've spent on baseball this offseason and, like, measurements of your hips and yeah. swings and biometrics of all that stuff. So yeah. you can – if you can take your kids in there and do that. All right. If you can I, analyze your will swing it, and Will do it that. be a reduced price? Or you think like, I have no, no idea what the price is going to be, but <laughs> hey, I'm guessing it's not going to be cheap. It's all going to be suburban kids. I, but, saw, the, know, I right. saw the renderings. Yeah. Uh, it's nice. It's, it's, I think it's going to be really, nice. I would think he would make it affordable. Yeah, no, I doubt that. But listen, he's paying for it, so hey, I don't he can care. Do it. He can do what he wanted to if do. If there was public money going into it, then I'd be pissed. 100% privately funded. these obnoxious, snooty golf lessons. but 100% privately funded between the If it's privately funded, I don't give a Rats ass and it's the, it, like it's the it's what's going on. Yeah. Orlando has one, Atlanta has one, San Antonio has one, and you partner with like this like Atlanta Emory Hospital down there. Yeah, uh, Orlando Advent Health, I think it is, and you have this. Who knew Jason was so uh, such an authority on the main hospital in every city? I mean, I've been studying this for the last twelve hours. When uh, when is it going to be open? Twenty twenty seven, likely. Possibly end of 26. They're oh. hoping to break ground this year. Oh, really? They're gonna, like, they're gonna, it's yeah. going to move fast. So it could be a new practice facility and potentially a new Brown Stadium. There's a lot going after. on. And will, we, will we still be looking for Evan Mobley to be uh, good by then? Wow. By then? I think he'll be good by then. You think so? 2027. I think he's already good. good. He's sure. good. Yeah. I'm he's good. All right. I've calmed down now. Is there anybody else I want to yell and scream about? Anybody else want to scream and yell about somebody? You're angry about the defensive rule. We'll, you, we'll get to that. We'll get, I'm, no, I'm, not, I'm, I'm mad at the rule, but my anger has shifted towards you. Yes. Because <laughs> of you. Fair. And we'll explain Fair. that when we get to that topic. But we're going to start with some potential extensions for Kevin Stefanski and yeah. Andrew Berry. But first, say goodbye to Busted Brackets because fans was letting you bet on every game of the NCAA tournament, whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed. It's time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if their first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS and bet on college hoops until they cut the nets down. And our winning ticket today comes from Mike Kados, who had a four-part parlay on the first round of the NCAA tournament turning $2 into $120. Nice. He had UAB with the points, Marquette giving 14 and a half. They covered Clemson money line and Yale money line, turning $2 into $120. So shout out to Mike Kados for today's winning ticket. As always, if you want to have a ticket featured on the show, you got to win a bet, send it in, and we will feature it in the coming days. All right, congratulations to Mike. We got to talk some extension stuff. One other quick note I just saw in the NFL. Despite the fact that Christmas Day this year is on a Wednesday, there will be Christmas Day football again this season in the NFL. Will the Browns Even on a Wednesday. Pl- will the Browns be playing on it? I don't know. That makes it official that there will be football on Christmas for the rest of time. That's right. If they're going to play it on Wednesday. Wednesday? Wednesday yeah. was the only day I don't think there'd ever been a game. Maybe. And you know who is most furious with the fact that there will be football? The NBA. The NBA. Silver. The NBA. they got pummeled last year in the Ravens. The NBA is terrified of the NFL. The NFL could well, do. Well, that's because the regular season in the NBA is becoming more and more meaningless. Well, Christmas yeah. Day was like their launch point. Yeah. It was. Like, it doesn't matter what happened. In it was the best October. game. Now it's over. Nobody cares anymore. But Christmas Day was the one day that the NBA had where they could showcase their teams. Yeah. And now the Panthers and the Titans will outdraw yes. anything, ah, any, anything that Ron the NBA does. Ah, 100% Titans. That's Come not, on. No, that's not the true. NFL, that's not true. The yeah, NFL is. is like if we, if we were able to have human beings. You know, at the time of the dinosaurs, there were no human beings, contrary to popular belief. Did you know that? No, I, I, I did not. Okay. Dinosaurs and humans never coexisted on the earth, right? They, the dinosaurs were wiped out 
before the humans came uh, to Earth. Jurassic Park, they got them on there. A Jurassic Park is the one example. <laughs> but I don't think that's based on reality. But the NFL is now what life would have been like if humans and dinosaurs existed. Because the NFL is the dinosaur. It does whatever the hell it wants. Steps on whatever it wants. They don't care. They don't have to answer to anybody. They are so far ahead of every other sport now. They could do anything. Anything can... It's they, coming to there's a, nothing boy, that can sidetrack it, the they NFL. They keep doing these rule changes. It's nothing. coming to an end. Never. They don't lose me. I was told... Never. I was told... <laughs> The NBA yeah. in-season tournament, may, the teams that go to Vegas may have to be there for like five days just because they're trying to avoid playing on Sunday to go up against the NFL. <laughs> That's the only reason. That's it. So now they have to be in Vegas Every longer. So, wait the a minute. NFL. That in-season tournament thing is here to stay? Oh, unfortunately. I think it's stupid, but it's here to stay. I mean, stay. I don't yeah, care one way or the other. It's stupid, but who they, cares? Teams is hanging banners. That's this. embarrassing. <laughs> That's, what's more embarrassing, hanging that banner <laughs> or wearing the chain? Well, no, we're in the chain. We're in the sure. chain. It's more but wow, I, y'all are so old. Cause y'all really against that you chain. Can't, you can't lose to the Knicks in five games and bring the chain back this year. I was fine with the chain Touché. last year. It's, I was Touché. fine. Whatever. It was a little hokey, but whatever. Yeah. You can't lose that series the way you lost it and then bring back a tough guy chain. Yeah. Like, yeah, that can't happen. No. All right. We'll talk Cavs in a second. Yeah, let's, sorry. let's focus so, on the Let's get to it. So, at the owners' though. meetings yesterday, Jumpin' Jimmy and D uh, said, do we have the... Do, do we have the audio or no? We do not have the audio. I should have asked that before the show. This it's a is bad the, job essentially what every reporter who's down there said. He said they're close to ext- – I'd love to have heard the actual quote. I don't know, maybe you heard something from Zach there, Jason, but Jimmy and D. Haslam said they're close to <coughs> extending – see, what I don't understand about – how could they be close? They're either, they they're either work, have an extension or they don't. You're like, working on the number. It's, it's, it's going to happen. I'm like, about to well, say what's that, the holdup here? The, the number. I don't know if it's the number, if it's the language of the contract, if it's buyouts, yeah. if it's – it could be a number of things. It could be what's the number – if we fire you, what's the, num- what's the buyout number? Well, why do you How think- many years can we stretch it? It could be countless but, little issues. But don't you think Jimmy would have been wise to have this settled and so he could have gone to the owners' meeting and said, done deal, sure. extensions for yeah. both guys. I, they They've had, had months here. This should have happened in November. I wrote November. I'm about to say, extend. yeah, they should so have. They've had plenty of time. So if you're saying, well, there's a hold up on some language, like why hasn't that been dealt with? Right? I, I don't know. But I, I am confident it's going to get done. You're expected to know. I don't know. We need you to know. I'm, I'm here. I'm not there. I'm here. <laughs> I didn't go this year. I know. I wanted to be here with you people. I was shocked. You don't like the owner's meeting? Oh, no, I like it. It's Florida. It's Florida in March. It's nice. But there Jason was, loves every place he could schmooze and drink. <laughs> There was no reason really for me to go this year. There was no compelling reason. I mean, there really, outside of this, this comment, there was nothing. There's nothing. From coach, GM, no. owners, <laughs> Because it's, it's something that you, you know it's going to happen before the season starts. Yeah, it's going to happen. It's going to get done. But aren't we a little surprised that it hasn't happened yet? Like, I, I, sure, Yeah, but I am. I thought I, it should yeah. happen the day after the season ended. Yeah. And, and maybe part of it is they didn't want to negotiate during the season. But, you know, I mean, that's what you have agents for is to handle that stuff sure. for you on your behalf. But whatever. Like, it, it, if it gets done December, March, In the grand scheme May, of things, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. That's fair. As long as it gets done. And certainly, if the owner's coming out and talking about it, it's going to get done. That's true. Uh, that, that's a fair point. He wouldn't have said that no, it's if they weren't done. on the verge of yes. getting it done. Now, to your point, it probably yeah. should have been done yes. before he talked. Right. But it's not. But they'll get, okay, so we'll assume it'll get done here in the next couple of weeks, probably before the draft, I would assume. I would have been saying it's getting close. So let me ask you guys this. What, what, what length of contract are you expecting here? Four. Four? Well, I'd go five. You, you gave him five to start. How do you go less now? That's a good point. He got five years when he was, he'd never coached because, an NFL be, game. Because this is the NFL and things change they year do. to year. Absolutely they do. But he's a two-time coach of the year winner. Yep. And you had to give him five years to come here because you were such a dysfunctional tire fire. That in order to get any coach to come here, you had to give him five years. So I would give him another five just because, like, you did it once. A three year extension doesn't make a lot of sense. He's already right. proven he's won coach of the year two times. Why would you go less than the original deal you gave him? Because if I'm Kevin, like, I'm five million, or I'm sorry, five years, yeah, 10 million a year. How much is he getting a year? Do you know right now? I don't know. Six, I think I could probably find out. I think it's like five, six, somewhere in there. I think. Right. This is Cleveland. Four years, ten million. Take it or leave it. Ten million total? No, no, no. no. Oh, a year. Ten, year, ten a year. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, I mean, 
It, had they listened to me and they done it when I said they should have done it, <laughs> he could have saved some money. He could have got them cheaper. They got to put another zero on that check now. Another t- <laughs> coach of the year. Whether award. it's four or five years, that that creates a stability in the organization. Now, Jimmy could always lose his mind again Absolutely. and fire because he's Jimmy. Yes. But the Browns have not had stability in this organization since they returned in 99. There's been no stability. Is he the first and to ex- sign an extension? Well, he, no. Hugh Jackson, Jackson did. Got oh, he and then immediately did. got fired. He got a one-year extension. Yeah. Uh, Kevin has been here the longest of any coach since Belichick. They're yeah. both at five years. Right. Bill lasted five years and was <laughs> yeah. fired by was, Baltimore or whatever. Wow. So as soon as Kevin coaches another game, he'll well, be Well, no, the it's lo- been only four years because this is the 20, 21, 22, 23 He's yeah, right. it's four. This will be. You're right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. This will tie in with Bill. Right. Once he passes the five-year mark, I think it's Retigliano is here seven. Yeah, something eight, like that. Something like that. And then before. And then you got to yeah. go to like Blanton Collier. Right. So Never I mean, if he gets him. if he if he gets through years five and six, he's already the longest tenured coach they've had here like forty years. Right. And the thing is, like, and I said this when it came to Marvin Lewis with Cincinnati, right? Before Marvin Lewis, for a while, the Bengals were what the Browns were before. Kevin Stefanski came here. They were a total disaster. And then Marvin Lewis righted the ship mm-hmm. and made the Bengals a legitimate team. Mm-hmm. Ultimately got to the playoffs a bunch of times, couldn't win. Right? Now, Kevin Stefanski has one playoff win. We can argue about, if, you know, whatever because he wasn't there. Basement. But what? Now, at some point, if he can't go further in the playoffs, then you're going to have to move on. But yeah. we are far from that point now. So you say he four, has more time. So four years. No, I, would, I agree with Jason. I would lock him up for five years. He that did. gives me te- that. That means I got five years before I have to even think about another decision. Actually, six because you got one year left. Well, on I'm saying because by, after five up. years, you'd want to <coughs> make yeah. a new contract. He only or gets three and a half a year right now. I thought it was higher than that, but Mike said three and a half. Yeah. Oh, really? Three so and a half. Ten. A- according to why not? Why can't he? Well, well, who's the highest paid coach in the league? Do we know? I mean, it was Belichick, was it not? Belichick was making. Well, forget Belichick. But no, what was Bill at last year? Like 16, 18? Uh, it was close to 20. What's Andy Reid making? Jeez. I mean, you can't compare anybody to Andy Reid either, really. But what, I'm curious. Hold on. I think Kevin's getting 10 to 12 annually. What, this number that he about to say about Andy Reid going to let me know. I mean, he shouldn't make as much as Andy Reid. No, he hadn't won a Super Bowl. No, yeah, he, he got to win a Super Bowl. <laughs> but he has, what he has done is created what, what the two of them together have done. And they, you would assume they get the same length extension. They should. They seem to have a good partnership, right? I mean, do we think they get along yes. well? Mm-hmm. Yes. And that's the first time that that's happened in forever here. Yes. You have cohesion between the front, the, the, the GM and the coach. It's not Game of Thrones. No. Of and they're, all, they're cut from the same cloth. Yep. They're the same type, right? Andy Reid's getting way. 12, by the way. 12. What's that? Andy Reid's oh, getting, getting 12. Oh, he's getting 8 or 9. Yeah, so. <laughs> eight, so eight eight 10 nine. is not a, I mean, it's not crazy. 8 or 9. Now, Andy Reid signed that contract whenever he yeah, signed it. Andy so money up? goes up. I, I don't much, know. But I wonder how much Andy has left on that deal. Yeah. I mean, he's if on he the signed that prior to the two Super Bowls, you know what I mean? I don't remember. Yeah, I don't know when he got an extension. I don't know either. But, I mean. I mean, he's, you know. He, he, he signed in 2020, according to this article. So, they oh, won two Super time. Bowls since then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyway, Oh, no, he can get to you. But get to you. It was, it, even though it still leaves a little mystery, Jason, in the end, you're right. The fact that Jimmy Haslam. Mentioned it publicly. Yeah, it, it's happening. It, it's happening. Uh, you know, ninety nine point nine percent. So well deserved. It's about time. Yeah, and and I think it's a. I, I think as a fan, to some degree, now there's some fans that don't like Stefanski. There's some fans that don't That's like Barry. Still going on. Yeah, of oh, course. Of course. There's, there's always going to be seen. people unhappy. Yeah. Hey, What's listen. To say? There's there are, people that don't like me. Can you believe that? Has, that blows my mind. <laughs> I can't believe that. There's it, actually people. They don't know you. <laughs> now, listen, it's fair to be critical of both. Kevin Stefanski is not a perfect job. No, sure. but and neither I mean, is Andrew Berry. I mean, but, come on, though. No. Right, but they've <laughs> both done a good enough job that you want to stick and have continuity and continue to let them grow. If you have a good coach, you want to keep him around because he will get better. Yeah. It's when you have a crappy coach, okay, you move on. But when it, once you know a guy is good. I haven't he, heard the fire st- Stefanski. No, I don't you. think people are saying fire Stefanski, but oh, it's it's there. Oh, it's, it's there. Oh, yeah. It's never Browns start Owen yeah. Owen two. Owen two. Yeah, and probably. they're going to be calling for it. Uh, G Bush will be there. He'll be leading the way. <laughs> G Bush, maybe not Owen two for G Bush, but it could be. <laughs> it depends it on what the, depends on what the Owen two look like, which which is fair. That's fair. Yeah. So uh, it looks like it's going to happen. That's about it. So we hope it gets done here soon. With the draft right around the corner, Mike. I asked the chat. Yeah. 
It's been up for two minutes, only 184 votes, so small sample size. But There's no way. Simple, just to answer your question, Tyvis. In your opinion, is Kevin Stefanski a good head coach? 88% say yes, 12% say no. How, what percent say no? 12. Yeah, I mean, those people are not the sharpest tools in the shed. Uh, Andy Reid's contract is up after next season. Uh, I'm sorry, after the 25 season. What he'll get, he'll get, get, he's about to get 20 million get 16, a year. 16, 18, 20. I yeah. mean, he should be the highest paid coach. I mean, he he's the be. best coach in football. It's yeah. not even a discussion. Yeah, he should be. He should be it's the not even paid. close. Not even close. Who's second? Do we know after Belichick? McVay, maybe? Well, so not after Belichick. It really depends Reed, on when maybe. you sign it. It doesn't matter oh, how good true. you are. It depends on the time. McVay could be up there. You know, speaking of coaches, I seen something as I was driving up today where Harbaugh is next, by the way. Yeah, there you go. That I man know. right there. Harbaugh he, McShay. Or that man Harbaugh. said <laughs> that J.J. And Sean, no, no, I take that back. Sean Payton's the highest paid coach in football right now. That's disgusting. What are oh. you getting? 18 million a year. That's Oof. disgusting. I wonder what Jim Harbaugh got. Jim. I didn't see it. Jim said that J.J. McCarthy's pro day was the best he's ever seen a quarterback have. Who cares? So this, is, so this is the thing. This is the thing. Yeah. I challenge Jim on this. If yeah. That's true. Yeah. You should trade Justin Herbert and say and take him. That's you're right. Well, they can't. They don't pick that high in the draft. Yeah, they do. They're the fifth pick. They got the fifth pick. The Chargers? Yes. Yeah. I thought he's might go two now to Washington. <laughs> that's definitely smoke. Am I crazy? <laughs> or is is JJ Reddick the latest in the line? Jim McCarthy. Of JJ oh, Reddick, JJ McCarthy, not oh, JJ, Reddick. JJ Reddick. JJ McCarthy, he's Kenny Pickett all over again. You think? Isn't he? Because he has I small hands. Than, I think he's better than Pickett, but he, that's a very low bar. No, 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 no. I think he's, he's better not than Pickett. Be good, is he? I hey. Listen, I ain't, I'm never going to say somebody's terrible. That guy, did you ever watch that guy play in Michigan and go, "That's an NFL quarterback." I never did. I seen him make some know. throws where I said, that's a good throw. That throw was incredible. But outside of that. I think he's going to be a total bust. But all right. I hope a, bad, I hope a team I hate takes him. Go ahead, Mike. According to CBS Sports, Jim Harbaugh's deal, five years, $16 million there you per, go. Just to FYI. 16 million well, I'm, if he's I'm, making 16 And if I'm Jimmy Sexton, I hold that contract up. You who? Kevin's agent. Oh, you hold who? that contract up to Jimmy and say, here's our starting point. Uh, yeah. Mm. Speaking of Stefanski, we'll talk about something else he said in a sec. But if you want to go to a Cavs game for the rest of the season, they have a couple of home games left. The next one is Friday against the 76ers. You better be buying your tickets on game time because with game time, you never have to worry about when you're buying tickets for your next big event, if you're getting the best deal or not, because game time guarantees that all with their best all-in prices. You can see your view from their seat and their best price guarantee. Make sure you're getting the best price available on the market for the ticket of your choice. Just download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Once again, create an account, redeem code Locked On for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. You know what's hilarious about this next thing we got to talk about, guys? So Kevin Stefanski, in his in his press conference yesterday, said that he still has not decided who the play caller is. Right? Uh, we'll talk about. I, I mentioned. Well, let's mention the Nick Chubb thing really quick because it's there. Good to hear that he's he's supposed to progress to more like a different type of workout, more football style workout. Andrew Berry was saying they should know soon if he'll be ready for the beginning of the year. And there was no answer on Brazil. But let's talk about play call. So, we've talked a lot in the media on this show, and I'm sure the other shows in town, about what's going on with the play calling. Mm -hmm. Like, is Stefanski being, is he giving up play calling? Is he having his hand forced to give up play calling? Or is he going to still call the plays? And why don't the Browns announce it? Now, what's funny to me is, what when it comes to Stefanski, guys, what do fans that aren't all in on Stefanski most complain about? Play call. Play calling. Okay. And yet those same fans are now complaining that the media is making a big story about this and there's no story. It doesn't matter. Even though they've been complaining for four years about the play calling. So if you're one of those people, you're a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite. Okay? <laughs> I don't like it. Now, it's a, the Browns have turned this into a bigger story than it needs to be, in my opinion, guys. Because if they had just announced it when they had, 
The idea that they haven't decided, I don't believe that. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't believe what. Why? Why haven't they? De- you, you think I'm wrong? Well, you think they maybe haven't decided. I have. I have my own personal beliefs of how this is going to go. Go ahead. But I'm going. No, I'm going to set those aside for a second. Yeah. Let's take them at their word. Okay. Let's take them at face value. They're telling the truth. They don't know. Kevin hasn't decided. Okay. It's perfectly logical not to announce a play caller in March if he truly hasn't decided. What type of relationship has he had with Ken Dorsey to this point? They have to get in together. They have to work together. Like, they haven't had one practice together to see how each other operates. Right. Kevin didn't decide. Really, I don't think Kevin decided until almost the start of the regular season when he got here who was going to call plays, him or AVP. And he decided it was going to be himself. Now, he was a rookie head coach. He had a lot of decisions to make. Maybe he saved that one for last. Whatever. But you want to go through practices. You want to go through training camp. You want to get to know a guy. They've had zero time to do that. So if you take them at face value. That, Which I don't, but go ahead. But if you take yeah. at face value that they haven't made a decision yet, that he hasn't decided, yeah. of course you're not going to decide in March. They haven't even had an OTA together. Like, they've had okay. zero time on the field together. Right. So Kevin doesn't know. Ken's, you can sit here across the table from each other, but until you get out there on the field, am I right? Until you get out there on the field yeah. – and experience it and feel it and see how he handles situations. How do you have any idea what you want to do in September when you have had zero time together in March? And everything you say makes sense, but do you are you buying what you're selling right now? I don't know. I was staunch. <laughs> yeah. I, but, what but, is no, what? no, but here's really? the thing. I don't know for me is moving toward the line because six weeks ago, I was pretty convinced Kevin wasn't going to be calling plays. They were bringing Ken in to call the plays. Yeah. And now the fact that they haven't announced it yet kind of tells me Maybe he does. Maybe he really does want to get here and see and and well, you, see how it goes. So yeah. that's actually for me to say I don't know is yeah. actually moving down the line because I was over yeah. where Bull was and I'm sort yeah. of training toward the well, middle now. Well, and I'll say if you're right that maybe if your theory is true that he wants to talk to him and go, then I would be okay with that because that means his hand hasn't been forced in the situation. Yes. Correct. That's all I'm asking for. Yeah. And I guess we'll never know for sure. Well, we will, but you know not I, for a while. You know what I think? Yeah. I think that once you know why they haven't announced it? Because for the for the simple reason he ain't put that pen on that paper yet. That's what it is. Because remember I told y'all last year, if it was up to me and it was my job was quote unquote on the line, I'm calling the play. Yeah. Flat out. Yep. It's a good point. At guys. this mo- at this point, he ain't signed no extension yet. Now, will it happen? Absolutely. I think after it happens, well, then, drive. now I can say, All right, now I can sit back and say, you know what, I got some stability here. I'm comfortable now. We, I got everything. I got this ship back on track. Ken, go ahead. Let me see what you do in OTAs. And if I don't like what you do in OTAs, guess what? Yeah. Training camp is back to my boat. I'm That's calling the place. Which is why they haven't announced it yet. Right. That's actually, I hadn't thought about it from that angle. That's an excellent point. Well, thank you. Uh, and, you know, and it could be that maybe that's part of the holdup. Maybe Kevin Stefanski's like, it's my decision who calls plays. And if, if Ken Dorsey's going to call plays, it's up to me, not the, you. The extension actually makes me believe that that is true. The fact that they yeah. are extending him yeah. ha- tells me that he hopefully has the autonomy and the authority that he should have and that I thought he had up until mm. January. Yeah. and I mean, I was told he was the one that wanted Rabel here first. Like, okay. it was Kevin's That's decision. Great. Of course he did. That's it was Kevin's He's decision. a buck guy. Go buck. It was Kevin's decision first. Now, do you believe that? I don't, if you're skeptical of that, I don't blame you. <laughs> well, but you probably heard it from a good source that, you know. Yeah, I mean, it was within yeah. the team, but, you know, what do you want him to say? He was forced on him? They're not, you know, even <laughs> no, if. that's true. So, <laughs> that's true for, from the 30,000-foot view, yeah. here's, where, here's where the extension is really important. From the 30,000-foot view, if you're looking down at the Browns and you're not inside the building, they fired their offensive coordinator, the head coach is in the last year of his deal, and they just brought in an elite head coach as a consultant. That is lining up to fire the head coach every single time. So to sign the extension, to hear it was Kevin's idea to bring him in or whatever, is all good things. Now we just have to let it play out because from the outside, it doesn't look good. But from the inside, if he signs the extension, when he signs the extension, yeah. all, all of that goes away. And if it really was his idea, then that shows you a level of confidence in his position. Now, he team. does have that. And that's, he is, that's important. Kevin is unbelievably confident. With no ego. 
I know that sounds contradictory. Yeah, well, that's. But he no. is very confident in, in his ability to lead a team. Kevin is one of those coaches that he he is a uh, he's lethal. You know, I went up against Kevin when I was playing with Denver in 2019, and he was the play caller for the Vikings. Vikings yeah, and we <laughs> I'll never forget this. We were up like 21 to nothing or 28 to nothing at halftime, and he came out in that second half. And he found our corner that was not that good at the time. Mm -hmm. And he went at this man literally every play. It was so bad that they had to take him out the game. <laughs> oh, wow. It was, uh, I was like, hey, this man is ruthless. Yeah. So Kevin got some killer in him. That's what, at that moment, I always had respect for Kevin's defense because I was like, he got some killer instinct in him. And I think that that's what we, I want to see him do that more in Cleveland now, now yeah. that he's got these pieces. I want to see him. Find somebody that's not that good and just continuously go right at them until they to the D coordinator yeah. got to pull the dude out the game. And it's not just the confidence as you talk about the confidence in himself, which and, is we, and we lost that. He came back and we lost that game. Oh, you too. lost the yeah, game. Yeah, we did. It was wow. unbelievable. Jeez. I sat there on the sideline like this is unbelievable. <laughs> How did we blow this? 20, 21 yeah. nothing or twenty eight nothing yeah. at halftime. We lost. But also, you've got to have confidence in your position within the team. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if he's willing, if he, if it was his decision to bring Mike Vrabel in, then he's not worried about, oh, here's this really good coach that they'll have in place if, right. if they fire me. He's right. not, he's obviously not worried about that. And so, all right, I'm feeling a little better. I was, when they first fired Alex Van Pelt, we heard that he might lose I was play calling. You. I was with you. I was very negative because I thought Jimmy was overstepping again yeah. and forcing his hand on a coach who had done a really good job. But you guys are, are talking me into that maybe it's Kevin's real decision here. I'm feeling well, a little said. better. As long, I don't care who calls the plays. As long as it's Kevin Stefanski's decision, decision. I that's do. all I care about. I, I did that. when I was was it yesterday? I was yesterday. I was listening to him talk at the Kevin or at the owners meeting, and uh, I think Tony Grossi asked him about it about the play calling or about the coaches getting fired and stuff like that. And he was saying, you know, he obviously he says nothing, but in the yeah. nutshell, <laughs> he he was saying, you know, we've been together for four years, and it was time to get new minds in there. Right. And I said that, you know, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. Like, that's that's nice to hear that you want some fresh ideas in there, that you saw this offense kind of be what it was, and you took it as far as you could. But if you want to get to the Super Bowl, yeah. maybe you think you need to get more elements and more different perspectives in there. And you think about the guys that they're, they hire, it's a lot of young, up-and-coming guys. And I always it's said, an impressive I always said yeah. to myself, well, why has it been that none of our coaches have ever been – poached off this off this uh, roster. You know, nobody's ever said, right. hey, come be my offensive coordinator right. or be my head well, coach. Well, Drew Petzing last year went from quarterback's coach to OC in Arizona. He was the first That's one. true. Oh. That is true. But that was one yeah. out of all these guys that's been here this for four I or five years. I thought Chad O'Shea would have moved on by now. Yeah, he so. Was, he was one of those hot names a couple years ago. So you think about the new guys that's in there. A lot of young, fresh blood that – Kevin's yeah. probably thinking to himself, hey, we're going to groom something, make something nice, yeah. and then you guys is going to get taken from this staff, and it's well, going to make yeah. me look like a really good coach. Well, I mean, I don't I don't think he gets credit if Rabel gets a job next Not year. Not Rabel. I'm talking but, about the uh, people on the offensive staff yeah, that, that and, they hire. Right. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because I'm assuming Vrabel will have a head coach job uh, yeah. next season, well, I would they, think. They, they don't get, if they don't get things right, it goes up. That's what it's like. <laughs> I Sorry, thought the buddy. Buckeyes had the greatest, <laughs> Sorry, buddy. the greatest transfer class of all time. They do, and th th they've literally lined themselves up to win it all this year. And if they don't, it's only one. Plus, th it's only one thing you can say. That they they couldn't beat Harbaugh in the last three years. Thanks, Ryan. It's been nice knowing you. There's an offensive coordinator job available in Green Bay. I, I don't think that because I think Ryan they'll be there. I think he'll win. Yeah. The, I think he'll win the Natty, and then he might tell them, "I'm going to the league." See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Enough with this recruiting nonsense. You Go know, ahead, it, Mike. One way or the other, it feels like we're getting toward the end of the of the well, ride. You know, the, the, t the O State head coach in ten years really doesn't last mm. that long. You get about nine seasons and then out. <laughs> Mike, uh, we talked earlier about the Cavs' new practice facility. We're going to talk Browns' new stadium in one sec, but Jason's yeah. going to elaborate on some of those Cavs' facility plans, and we're going to break down whether or not 
it's too late for the Cavs to be fixed or if there's still time for Cleveland to fix its issues tonight on the next episode of the Ultimate Cavs Show, debuting at 5 o'clock. It'll be live. Jason and myself, as always, every Tuesday coming at you with 30 minutes of uninterrupted Cavaliers content. Make sure you all tune in. And if you missed the debut of the Ultimate Guardian Show yesterday with Bull and Zach, make sure you check it out. It was a phenomenal 30 minutes of just not Guardians enough time. content. People were complaining it was not enough time. One woman complained that my background wasn't appropriate for the Guardians. I was thinking about that. Like, my, my background at my house is... I got a, a mix of stuff back there. I need to get some additional Guardian things to put, put up there, but the time Better does go fast. Each and every week, well, you can improve on that for next week. All right, we'll work uh, on Speaking it. of stadium stuff, yeah. though, another thing that Jimmy Haslam said at the owners' meetings was he's essentially down to two options for a new stadium. Renovate the current stadium downtown for a billion dollars. Which or, I assume means no roof. Correct. Yes, no roof. Or build a dome stadium outside of downtown, presumably in the Brook Park lot that he has optioned to buy earlier. Why can't, what I don't understand is, is why is it not an option <coughs> to build a new stadium downtown? There's no space. Not to do what he wants to do. Okay. Not to put a dome. You, well, you could, you, could, you could find the land yeah. to put a dome stadium, but he wants it all. He wants the mixed use component, right, right, right. Re- the restaurants, hotels, so that he should pay for shopping. the whole thing. I don't disagree. That's yeah. I think so too. That's kind of how Jerry Jerry's world is. Yeah. And, well, uh, that's what a not, lot of teams are not doing the now. stadium, but yeah. like the practice, the practice facility, facility the is in Frisco. Yes. It's, it's, it's like his own city. It's like a community. Yeah. Down yeah. There. Well, where the as Patriots I was doing, as I was reporting out this Cavs story, yeah. they kept referring back to the. Oh star. yeah, it's it unbelievable. Was Frisco. I, I got it was a beautiful. I got thank God I got to spend me a. A training camp in preseason there. It was nice. The star I mean, in Frisco is incredible. Renovating incredible. the current stadium seem, seems stupid. It's awful. It's, it's a, a terrible, terrible idea. idea. Well, it's yeah, you the one that said that it's the poorly built and all those things. They, it doesn't. You know what's funny? The company that designed Brown Stadium yeah. is the one doing the Cavs practice. <laughs> yeah. But but they are very good. They are that stadium is a clunker, but this company is very good. But they don't even have a service level that goes all the way around the stadium. Like it's only half. That's all. It's it's nuts. The, so, the whole design. Wait a minute. Say that again. The service level is not three sixty. It's only half. Really? That's why, yes. That's why you like. There's certain spots that you have to like go to a different spot to get to a different floor. Yeah, that's awful. No, uh, you're absolutely right, because yeah. when I go to the press box, I do got to, yeah, yeah, you're right. So, let's talk about this. I, the, in terms, the things that I don't, I, I don't you, know, you're, you are closer on these stories, but I don't even know if you know. The, the, if the team moved to Brook Park, yeah. how devastating is the negative impact on this? I don't think it is. I really don't. So then why? There's a lot of people that disagree with that. Okay. Smart people that disagree with that. Yeah. I look at it as, guys, it's 10 dates a year. It's much more devastating if the Guardians leave, even though they don't draw that many people, but it's 81 dates. And the Cavs with 41 dates and all the concerts that they put on, it would be far more devastating for the Cavs to leave downtown than it would be for the Browns. The Browns, it's 10 dates. But what are people saying? Like, but the city is obviously trying to keep the team in in Cleveland. Well, yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, they should, but I don't think it's that big of a deal if they go to Brook Park. I, I I don't see what the you want them to go what to the Brook horror Park, is. Huh? Well, I I get it I makes get, the most sense of these two options. I well, if the concept if you only, if do. you're getting the dome in Brook Park, yeah, then and you, you can't do that downtown. Well, here's the here's where you lose the economic impact. On a Sunday morning, you drive downtown, you park your car, yeah, you stop at three or four bars on your way in, right. You're, you're so, so that part, and, and there's really not a lot of pre gaming going on for Guardians and Cavs games. Right. Certainly not Guardians. Yeah. Cavs are some, and Guardians there's a little bit, but it, obviously Browns is the big one. So those, <laughs> those bars and restaurants around West Third and around right. the stadium, they're going to feel it what on if, Sundays for sure. Whereas in yeah. Brook Park, you're going to drive in, you're going to walk in the stadium, and you're going to walk out. That's not, no. Or if you do frequent anything, it's all Jimmy's that you're frequenting. Yeah, that's true. Because he's going to have it all. Yeah, that's it's going to be true. Jimmy's world. It is going to be Jimmy's world. But is it, what about, like, tax revenue from the stadium? Like, how does that, I, mean, I don't know anything about. Yeah, I mean, you that, know, that's. You're going to lose that. I mean, what do they do? I guess, in theory, what, would you turn all that land into housing? Into, would you develop that? I, certainly, you know. there are better uses for what, lakefront property in Cleveland. Yeah. Than a freaking stadium that you use right. ten days a year. I just so I don't think it's a bad always, thing at all. On these conversation, like because we've never had a conversation about the team moving out of the city. Right. In, in terms of like, 
it's not leaving the area. Correct. So fans are not losing their team. Correct. But I, I, I don't know enough about the economic impact. I know that we all know that Cleveland, in the grand scheme of America, of the big cities in America, is a struggling city in a lot of ways. It's improved. The city's been been improved, and I know in the 13 years I've been living here, but it, it's still tough. There's a lot of poor people in the yes. city, and I would just be, it just would suck if, if, if peop, the, the, the regular people of Cleveland would take a, would, if this would be a negative for the people. I, I, I don't, well, here's I don't how know it's the a negative for, for Here's how it's a negative for the people. If they build a dome stadium, it's going to yeah. price out a lot, of, a lot of fans. Like the ticket prices are going to be astronomical that's true even more so than they already are yeah i think like i no one's told me that but like it's common sense right jimmy's putting a billion dollars into a stadium he's gonna try and get that money back yeah he's gonna do it part of it through ticket revenue and there's gonna be psls or something like that i would imagine all over again so it's gonna be very very expensive to go to a browns game psls so so from that component it would be hard but if you're looking at like you want to sit in warmth and in like have a normal experience watching a game do you want the revitalization of the greater cleveland area not necessarily it would give you it would give the city time and money to redevelop the waterfront and do it right the Cavs are redeveloping the river and they will for sure do it right like dan and i have had our wars in the past but when that guy spends money it is elite it is top of the... Where? Where is he? On the, the new practice facility along the Cuyahoga River. Okay. So it's... it's, it's They're going to do a whole Oh, it's... Thing. Yes. It's going to be It's nice. going to be a whole... Okay. There's going to be a spot to... You can... Uh, it's going to be like a kayak launch point. Okay. So you can actually access the Cuyahoga River now, which hasn't been done in decades. So if the Cavs are taking, the front of the, taking care of the Cuyahoga River component of this, if the city can do the waterfront, Jimmy handles... Brook Park, like we're talking, and I was going to try and write something about that in the next week or so. You're talking about a whole overhaul of yeah. Greater Cleveland, and we haven't even gotten to the women's soccer team that's trying to build a stadium too. Now I don't know where the money's going to come from for all this stuff. Yeah, Dan's going to take care of that component. You don't have to worry about that, but it will take public dollars. It, it will take it will take public dollars to do the football stadium. I agree with you. Jimmy should pay for the whole thing himself. He's not yeah. going to. But we've talked about it before. There are ways without going to the general fund, without right. taxing, with, with using people who will use the stadium, gambling. There are ways, marijuana, yeah. there are ways to get that thing built without using general fund dollars. And then the women's soccer stadium would be a cool, smaller venue. But I just don't know where you, see, where you get the funding for that. I'm still working on that, compo- that piece of it. I would love, Mike, I, I think at some point, here we need to bring on somebody i don't know if it's from the city or and, and to talk about what the negative impact would be how bad it would be i mean i'm thinking about i'm thinking about the businesses and the bars you know that would that would hurt it would hurt on sundays for sure yeah. it, w- it would hurt for sure and it and it's not really just you know 8 or 9 days or whatever it is because people go downtown on road games too don't they what do you mean? Yeah, I mean it's not to the same extent that it is. No, people, but people will go like to Saturday the bars. Night? You, you mean know, Saturday nights? No, I mean people will go to the bars on a Sunday, even if the Browns are on the road, to just hang out with other Browns fans at a bar. Does that happen? Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's the West. For example, West Six Tailgate on a home game is you know your standing room only, your yeah. shoulder to shoulder. It's packed. Right. Now, it, if if you go out to Barley House or Map Room or whatever on a yeah. Sunday and they're on the road. There are still people out there watching the Browns game together, but it's right. nowhere near the same capacity and as for a home game. There's no reason why that would necessarily change. Now that I think about it, it's a, if it's a road game, what's the difference? Right. where the team is playing, and and it, yeah, I, I, it, if those are the only two options, in you know, in a vacuum, the Brook Park thing makes sense because it would make sense to have a stadium. But I hate to see the city that has been on the rise in a positive way in I a think lot it of ways. Can be. Like, I think hurt. the stadium looks terrible on it the lakefront. It looks front. awful. And they've, you know, I, I had, there's a couple people who I talk to fairly frequently who this is what they do. And they've, yeah. they've been part of these stadium projects, public financing, that sort of thing. And the point that's always made to me is like, look at the Rock Hall. It is this beautiful architectural structure. Yeah. Look at the Science Museum. Nice. It's this beautiful architectural yeah. structure. And they look like Tinker Toys compared to this massive right. thing that sits empty 
355 days a year. Like, what yeah. sense does that make? Now, I'm not saying the city will ever get it right. Yeah. But the Browns leaving the lakefront would at least give them the opportunity to develop that. The, the, the state's already committed the money to a footbridge to connect the lakefront. I, think, I would think that that's still in play, even if the stadium is not there. You still need to be able to access it. Right. And now it gives you a clean slate. Get rid of that friggin' thing and, <laughs> wow. and use the land. Look at Navy Pier in Chicago. Why can't Cleveland have something like that? Yeah. Like, there are so many possibilities that are so much right. better than a stupid stadium on the water. Waterfront property is so valuable. And we put an airport on it in a stadium. I know. If you can get are rid of the airport me? and, the, you know. You know who uses the airport? The rich guys, Jimmy yeah. and Dan. That's why I not get rid of that. That's what Dan uses. Jimmy uses it. They fly their private planes in there. They're right there downtown. Everything is done for the rich, and they have the, everybody else fighting now, with each other. Now, I think that there are That's, reasons. Uh, something about the land. I, I, don't, I don't know. I've heard different theories as to why, be, they can't, yeah. why they, they can't get rid of the airport. I think it's because that's what the billionaires use. They own the sports teams in town. It's disgusting. I, well, I know Dan uses it. Yeah. I, I shouldn't say for sure Jimmy does. I imagine he does. But, but they're he also here quite a bit. Like they're, but I know, like, I've talked to Dan yeah. before. It's wild. Dan will leave his house during a Michigan State game. This is pre-stroke. Yeah. Dan would leave his house at, like, halftime of a Michigan State football game yeah. and be in Cleveland and miss, like, five minutes of the third quarter because he would, his plane was that close to his house in Detroit. <laughs> he would fly to Burke, land at Burke, drive to the queue, and miss, like, yeah. five minutes. It's crazy. Must be Some nice. life. Go ahead, Mike. What a life. Are there any other – and I want to let Earl hop in here for a sec, but Earl actually had an idea for a potential third option something that hadn't been discussed yet. And I'm curious what you guys think about this idea. Earl, take it away. Yeah, this will be on behind the glass tonight too. But my third idea was, I think the, how you meet in the middle, and fans may like this, may not like this, but you find somewhere else for the Browns to play at for the next two or three seasons. You tear down the current stadium and you just rebuild a dome on the land that the current stadium is on. I mean, when you talk about the airport being right there, clearly every, every code that needs to be passed for where the stadium currently is, you could just tear that down and rebuild a, a dome right there. I think that's the best way that you can meet in the middle of getting a dome stadium without the Browns moving downtown, from downtown Cleveland. And I know me and Jason had talked about this before. I think that the owners, the mayor, and whoever else involved are going to have to come to the table and figure out, okay, what can the city put towards this and then how can the Haslam family invest resources, funds, and ex uh, jobs, et cetera, back into the city of Cleveland? Here's the thing. Jimmy holds the hammer on this because he's already got the, or he's got the option to buy the land in Brook Park. I don't think they want a dome on the lakefront like, because you, you can't do everything he wants to do with the mixed-use component. So then to why is he even saying it's an option to just renovate because if that's really what he wants to do? I, I tweeted this last night. Yeah. Like, let's just be real about this. If they get the funding, they're leaving. They're going to Brook Park. Yeah. But the funding is a huge component of this. Like, they got to come up with a billion dollars in public money. And that's not ter so easy to do, especially for an owner in town who isn't really liked that much. Like, can we be honest? Right. Do yeah. people really like Jimmy Haslam? No. They love Dan Gilbert. People love Dan Gilbert. Dan got casinos passed I don't in know. Ohio. You know how long they tried to legalize gambling in Ohio? For decades. They couldn't get it done. You know who got it done? Dan Gilbert got it done. Oh, yeah, listen, a nice greasy pop. Listen, I, I don't have a Black problem. Man. As a matter of fact, I like Jimmy. <laughs> Here I like go. Jimmy. You want an extra you, hundred? You know, Jimmy, uh, yesterday you allowed me to come on the Browns radio, and me and Nathan did a wonderful job. Got to talk to Rodney McLeod. Had a great interview. Y'all should check that out on the Cleveland Browns Daily. And I just think that, Jimmy, you just you take care of the people that you want to take care of. And if you want to take care of a guy by the name of Tyvis Powell, I'm all here for it. Between the FBI investigation, <laughs> yeah. bumbling the Browns for 10 years, yeah. the Deshaun contract, yeah. buying the Bucks, uh, getting sued by Warren Buffett, yeah. there's a lot of strikes against yeah. Haslam. And yeah. I don't know if they take this to the ballot, I don't know that they can get it passed. And if yeah. they can't get it passed, that's how they wind up back on the lakefront. That's the yeah. only way. But if they get funding, if they feel confident, if they get the right lobbyists and they get something on the ballot and they feel, and that has to happen soon. But either like, way, they have to get some public money, no? Yes, but they want the big... They, they want a billion yes. instead of half a billion. Yes. I, got, I, I figured it out. Listen. Yeah. 
Jimmy, that's what you need to do. What you need to do is you need to get somebody that's loved and respected by a lot of Cleveland people to pass it because your apparently Jason thinks that your 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 image is tainted. So I'm willing to use my public, my squeaky clean public image mm. to help you for a couple more zeros in my check. Two hundred. <laughs> two hundred two <laughs> yeah. to three hundred dollars. It's not like I'm asking to break the bank. Two to three hundred more dollars in my radio check. That seems fair. You get him a half a billion dollars and he yeah, you know, he gives you a couple of hundred dollars. That, that seems like a fair trade. Hey, listen. You yeah. know what yeah. I don't understand though, Jason, if you're right I think about this. Okay, so if Jimmy can get a billion in public funding, mm -hmm. he's going to do the Brook Park thing. Mm -hmm. But if he can only get half a billion, he's going to do downtown. So what I would think is if the, if the Brook Park thing is such a profit machine for him, mm -hmm. then wouldn't he be better off spending one and a half billion? So let's say he can only get the half, only get a half a billion. Yeah. And instead of spending, he was going to do a billion and a billion. That's what he's looking for. Wouldn't he be better off in the long run if he spent a billion and a half, even if the public funding was only a half a billion? Because in the long run, it'll be worth so much more to be in Brook Park for him? Possibly, but I think they're going to start with they want half. And by the way, it's going to be higher than two billion. Like, it's going to be closer right, right. to two and a half. I mean, when you get to those figures, what's another hundred million? Right. At the end but of, at but the there end. is a big jump from, we're talking a billion <laughs> To really two and a half billion, so that's quite yeah. a leap. I think it's gonna go down to one of those things that he's gonna ask and keep asking until to see how much he can get, and then whatever is left, he's just gonna say, you know what, bleep it. Boom. He's gonna go. It, <laughs> I just pay the rest. Are, are we, percentage chance that this ends up in Brook Park? You think? Eighty-five. At Ninety. Ninety. Yeah. It feels All the like that. pointing that way. Uh, and what's our best guess is when this stadium is going to get built? 28. When's, when they start building. Oh, when well, the least start be built. It, that's going to depend on, like, I've had conversations with people at the Browns that, like, you've got to get this on the ballot now. And I wrote about it in that story a few weeks ago, and I'm trying to remember now. The lease is up, what, 28? The lease is up in 28. 26. And 26 what? That's when they start building. That's too late. You got to start building next you year. You got to start building now. <laughs> oh, yeah, because <laughs> it took Minnesota three to four years, I think, to pass the legislation and uh, get the financing in place and get the stadium built. It was yeah. about a three, four-year project. So the, so the so 28th season is the last season the last because it was a 30-year lease. Yeah. Began in 99. Right. So 2028. So they need a new stadium by 2029. 2029. Yeah, and, so, and we're really, it doesn't feel like it. Right. you got to decide Yeah, I mean, it's five now. Years. It's, you know, it's, it's coming. Yeah. And one more thing on this. Keep this filed away. The, I think the best path to get this thing financed is... Uh, marijuana. The, well, marijuana is part of it. The pull tabs. The electronic pull tabs. Yeah. And we talked about this before. I wrote about it before. Yeah. The person in charge of that component... Yeah is Dave Yost, Ohio's Attorney General. Who's running for governor in two years? Dave Yost, Ohio's Attorney General. Who's he trailing? John Houston, who is far ahead in fundraising and everything else. Houston is most likely to win as DeWine retires. Houston mm -hmm. is the uh, deputy. He's the assistant, the yeah. vice governor, whatever you want to call it, the deputy governor. Houston's probably going to win. If Yost wants to make a run at him, what better way to build your platform than to get mm. financing in place for not just Cleveland. I don't like Yost. For, for facilities all across Ohio, for sports facilities mm. all across Ohio. Well, to it should get, just be him. Should, anybody should be running on that platform, really. But he's the one in charge. He's the one that can control this. Yeah. With, he's a shady character. With my opinion, uh, the gambling, anyway. with, the, with the electronic pull tab gambling. And yeah, Jerry, that's true. That's his, his office falls yeah. in. And what I'm trying to say, I'm going about this horribly. Yeah. The charity gambling falls under the Ohio Attorney General's office. Mm. And that's what, that's, I think, that's how Minnesota built uh, yeah. their stadium. And that's, I think, the best path to get this one done. So all right. file Bullying that away what, because it all goes back to politics and it always goes back to money. What person in power isn't shady? Uh, well, there are some that aren't, but that's for another day. Go ahead, Mike. Speaking of another day, Matt Miller, who was supposed to join us in 10 minutes, has rescheduled to Friday. They had some breaking news he had to uh, attend to on ESPN, so he asked if he could reschedule. What's breaking news right now on ESPN? 
just with these rule changes, how it affects some of the draft okay. prospects, if anyone's going to move up, which leads us to our next topic anyway. Yeah. You're going to be able to bet on kickoffs next season. And if you're betting on kickoffs because there'll be a higher return rate, you better be using FanDuel America's number one sportsbook. Also on FanDuel, you can say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel is letting you bet on every game of the NCAA tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook. And right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if their first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS to get started today. The first rule I want to talk about, Bull. Yes. This got, this got feisty in our pre-show meeting. I just have a cease and desist between you and Tybus. <laughs> yeah. The NFL has banned the hip drop tackle. I will give Tybus the floor first. Go ahead, Tybus. Tybus, your thoughts on the NFL banning the hip drop. Thank you, McNuggets. <laughs> <laughs> so, my, my thoughts on it is... And I don't care what Bull say. Anything that Bull says after what I'm about to say, don't believe him. He's lying. But anyways. <laughs> I was going to agree with you, so I guess I'm lying about that. <laughs> Let me be serious. Go ahead. Sick. Go ahead. I, I'm upset with it because, like, first of all, it, it's, it's too murky. You know, it, you, you send a whole video out about what you don't want to see, and then you'll put another video out just saying that this is okay, and it, it, it looks the same. And as a defender, the worst thing you could do is cause confusion to a defender, you know. And my thing is, I, like, I always go to the to just a, a regular slant, just a slant. You a, a receiver runs a slant, and you got to get you got to run him down. Of course, you're going to end up wrapping him up by the waist, bringing him down, and that's considered a hip drop now. And that's so so everybody's going to run slants now. If you going up, what about that that corner that's a buck eighty five that's got to go up against this two hundred and fifty five pound tight end? How do they get this man to the ground? Like it's a lot of things that just doesn't make sense. And it always seems to be that they always are looking to handicap the defense. The defense is already hard as a defender. It, like you've done everything to make this <coughs> an offensive game because I get it. Everybody comes to see the deep ball. Everybody comes to see long touchdowns. Whoop de doo. But that's the reason we play defense is to stop these things. And we've come up with so many different ways and been creative enough to, to get these stops. And it seems like every single year y'all do everything y'all can to make it so we, it makes it even harder for a defense to succeed in this league. And y'all do nothing for the offense. Y'all like they just completely can do whatever it is that they want to do. So the hip drop thing to me is stupid. They should have never did it. Yes, a couple of people get hurt a, a year, but you know what? They get hurt in other ways every year as well. So I, I think this is a dumb rule ban. Um, it's another way to handicap a defense, and I don't see the point of it at all. I really don't. All really right. Don't. So I the reason I got aggravated before the show. It is not because I think the rule is good and necessary because I don't give a crap about the rule. I actually agree with your general point that the rule is stupid. I, when I saw the video of what a hip drop tackle was, I was like, I don't understand. It just looks like a regular tackle to me. I was completely confused. What I got, what I can't stand is that every time I agree, it's a stupid rule change in the grand scheme of things. I don't think it's that big a deal because they the NFL reported it happened on average once per game, so I don't know that it's making that big a difference. What I can't stand is that every time there is a defensive rule change, you have defensive players on Twitter, you have fans on Twitter, oh, I'm not going to watch it. Let's get them flag football. You're all going to watch it. The players are still going to play. Stop whining and crying about it. That's life. You're getting paid a lot of money. Deal with it. Maybe. I'm just sick of the complaints. Stop saying you're going to stop watching the game. Nothing, nothing that happens in football is stopping anybody from watching the game. Have people really said I'm going to stop watching the game because they took out hip drop tackles? Have They're, people said that? Yeah, you don't want look at at at, at anything on Twitter. I do. From fans, <laughs> I don't look at my mentions <laughs> from Twitter. No, the fans <laughs> they smart, go. They, yeah. they, there's such an overreaction, and it, it's annoying. I find that more annoying than these stupid rules. I didn't see nobody say that, but I did see all the defensive players say the same thing I yeah. said. Like it's it's ridiculous. Like y'all. Of course it's ridiculous. I, I, the, I, my thing about is it. the tush push was on the ballot, but y'all let that pass. Yeah. Well, no one's hurt with it's the tush push, are they? It's very violent. One yard. It's a very violent mm. one play. Very wait, wait what's till the, the difference? Starts handing out knives. What's the yeah. <laughs> what's the difference between that and like a wedge buster? 
Like you got guys flying over the top, no, no, no. running smack dead I, into I somebody. I agree. As much that's as a, I yelled and screamed before play. the show, I agree it's stupid. They shouldn't have added it. Here's the here's my one we'll concern. We'll get over it. Then they go get you get fined and flagged for it. Well, I know there are I, too many fines in the like, NFL. Like come on, it's ridiculous. Man. I'm gonna get fined for making a tackle. Yeah, it's stupid. like that's dumb. I agree with you to try to help my team win in a game that's a game of inches. I'm gonna try to get this man to the ground, but it's gonna cost me. Twenty five thousand dollars, like that's ridiculous, man. Y'all, y'all, y'all is y'all absurd with some of the stuff that y'all do. It, it really, like, I understand the helmet to helmet thing, like that. That's right to CTE and that's concussions. I get that, but this right here, that's ridiculous, man. Y'all, y'all do everything y'all can for them, but when y'all can y'all ban something? Maybe ban stiff arms. How about that? Some of no. them is very violent on stiff arms. Well, how about a, a runner can't lower his shoulder and try to run nobody over? Maybe that's that's violent on a defender but y'all that's so that's okay to do that's what i'm saying y'all listen to that and y'all be like that's blasphemy tigers why would they want to get rid of that Never. same thing with a hip drop why would you want to get rid of that that's dumb it is dumb. <laughs> here's the one thing where i think like they can they can hide behind player safety and it's for player safety that's I, not the case i don't know that I, yeah i tend to agree with you i don't think they really care about player safety in the end but here's the one thing where it feels like Unintended consequences and a slippery slope maybe is I'll go back to the NBA 20 years ago when they changed the rules defensively and how you could guard. And they, they really tr- they were trying to open up. The, the scoring was low. Now, that's not the problem in the NFL. But scoring in the NBA was low. They were trying Almost to get scoring higher scoring in the NFL games. has been going down a little bit. Well, t- in the NBA, Jerry Colangelo and David Stern were adamant. Like, it, the vote failed once, and they said, no, we're going to pass this. Get back to the table. We're going <laughs> to do this. And what started with maybe good intentions of opening up the game 20 years ago has led to what you see today, which is many cases unwatchable. Right. And I just worry with the NFL as they try and you're right. Everything is predicated on the offense. How do we get more scoring? How do we get more excitement? And some of these moves in a vacuum may not seem like a big deal, but when you add one on top of another, on top of another, on top of another, my fear is, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, the NFL is facing some of the problems that the NBA is where, what do you do? But isn't the NBA still very doing well? Well, that's not compared to football. But but I mean, like, look, look at All-Star Weekend. Yeah. I mean, that's a drastic example, but look at All-Star Weekend. Like, that is very much (coughs) uh, the starting point of that was what I'm talking about with Jerry Colangelo and David Stern. Now you get it to where no one's trying and they're just walking down and jacking threes. It was never like that before. But don't you think that... I mean, I find a lot of NBA unwatchable personally, and I think I think people my age and older do. Yeah. But I think young people still I love I the know. NBA as much as ever. No, I don't know. No. Not according to the ratings. No, like, no either. No, yeah. it's not. I mean, the high point recently was the Cavs Warriors Finals. I think I don't know if that's been surpassed or not. Like the 2016 Finals, mm-hmm. but it's been it's been trending down since then. Like, boy, you don't miss going to the game and seeing a good big hit. I do. Yeah, the, the, you I don't, do. You don't see them. No I hear more. you. And like and that, yes. That's what, what about us? Like what as about a us? as a defender, what do we look forward to? What is the one thing that we could get the crowd Rules to go? Rules are not made and for and players. Yes, they don't. The, the league doesn't care about the players. You know that. Hmm. They care about getting sued by the players. Yeah, that's, that's, a, yeah. that's the only thing they care. <laughs> I think they do they care only about care that. about money. That's all the owners care about. What they make big hits. Big hits get you money. Big kids get you sued. That do too. And that costs you. Uh, it's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> the league, even though ratings were just actually ratings went up again last year, but a lot of good quarterbacks didn't play, and I don't know that I don't think this hip track ta- uh, hip tackle is going to make any difference, hip drop. But I got to see. They, are, they do want to keep quarterbacks healthy. I'll tell you that. Like, I got to see it because I was reading that the, it, it only applies when you land on their legs. Isn't it mostly? Like, that's dumb. Isn't it mostly, and, and maybe I'm way off on this, when you're catching guys from behind? Yeah. So it or wouldn't the really side. Apply, it or, wouldn't really apply to quarterbacks, right? Like, you're not no, really bringing a quarterback no. down on a hip. Maybe yeah, Josh no. Allen. Unless but that's the thing. in the open field running away. Right. Like, that's the thing. Right. You, you're taught. So this is the thing. So they everybody's into the rugby style tackling, and I was too. I learned it at Ohio State, and I learned it in Seattle. That's literally what the NFL is trying to implement: this rugby style tackle, using your shoulder. But that what you don't realize is, you only can tackle like that 
when it's head on. A right. lot of the times, I say 85% of tackles that's made in games are from angles. It's an yeah. angle tackle. Right. And a lot of the times, that's wrapping and rolling. So now I'm going to wrap him and I'm going to roll. But if I land on his legs, it's a penalty. Like, that doesn't make any sense. So how – so 85% of the tackles I'm not going to make? No, it can't be that simple. Bull, think about it. The yeah. game is not played north and south no, anymore. No, 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 no. I'm so saying a, so it can't be that if you make a regular tackle and you land on his legs, it's a penalty every time. You better read it. I swear I that's what know. I read yesterday. All right, you, you, you've won it me make, over. It it's makes no, thank you. I better <laughs> stop watching football. <laughs> I didn't say all. Uh, I mean, yeah. That's, you know what? That's what we need. We need to boycott it. Yeah. The whole defense needs to boycott it. This really it. goes back to me because I don't like J.J. Watt. I think he's a phony. I don't like that he tried to get his brother the uh, I don't think he's a phony. He's I have a, no idea. You don't like that he tried to get his brother the war? Yeah. What is I don't that? like his brother. I don't like the Watts. I'm anti Watt. What about Derek? I don't know. He's meaningless. <laughs> Bull, he just retired, show, actually. Yeah. When you and Tyvis were getting into it, sometimes that's why we gotta separate y'all beforehand so we can see. I know, that but I wasn't really <laughs> worked up about the rule. It was more, you know, me on a rant about He talking about the defensive players yeah, yeah, that's yeah. always complaining. They're always complaining. That's yeah. just like But oh, you gotta whatever. it's cause you're not a defensive player at heart. Like you gotta think no, like no. they're li- every boy, you can't sit there and tell me that every no, other you're year right. don't seem like if, they're taking something away if from if the I defense. Had, you're right, hundred <laughs> percent. If I had been uh talented enough to play in the NFL, I definitely would have been an offensive player. I would have been you like want a the guard. Glory? You want the glory? No, because I've been a guard or something. You know, but I, I don't want to be you tackling anybody. You're, I want to protect well, the guards. Guards get the chances when they when the running back goes yeah. in and scores. Sometimes yeah. they hand the ball to the guard and they get to spike it. Yeah. And that. maybe guards bowl will be on the field in the NFL's new kickoff rule that was officially adopted. We had spoken about this on a previous show. They're adopting the XFL kickoff rule. We have a video of what it'll look like. And if you want to play, what's funny is the, the new ball. UFL has gotten rid of this rule. Did they? But it starts. The players are five yards apart. You cannot <coughs> move until the returner catches the ball. It eliminates the head-on contact. There was one kick return touchdown in the XFL last season, but teams averaged five to six kick returns per game, so it's bringing it back in the game. If the ball goes into the end zone. A touchback now brings it out to the 30-yard line. It was initially proposed to the 35. It was amended. It now comes to the 30. This makes Naheem Hines and the signing of him even more valuable as one of the premier returners in football in 2022. Well, I, mean, what do I you don't guys... know. We don't know if he's still the premier returner. It could be. But I'm just saying it adds year, another but... element to the game. <laughs> was he? Are you guys fans of the new implementation of the kickoff rule of the NFL? Now, what's the, there's now. more to it if it just lands. So, if it goes in the end zone – Goes back to the thirty-five. It goes to the no the thirty. The thirty, excuse me, thirty. Oh, 30. Okay. Where are they? Right, kicking, that helps the where offense. Where are they kicking it from? Either the thirty or the forty. They're kicking it off. Hear, do you want to see a full video from Jeff Darlington? Did a full. It's two minutes. Yeah, long. let's see this. Let's watch. Yeah, we this. played a Jeff Darlington video. He did this on ESPN this morning. A very good explanation of the new kickoff rules. Steve, you can play. The National Football League wants to juice things up while still pursuing their continued desire to improve safety on the game's most dangerous play, the kickoff. Two major rule changes at this year's annual league meetings are being considered. The first and most significant, the NFL is considering adopting the kickoff rules used by the XFL after the NFL saw kick returns on just 22% of kickoff in 2023. Under the new rule, the kicker would remain in his normal spot. The rest of the kickoff team would line up on the receiving team's 40-yard line, and the receiving team would line up five yards away on their 35-yard line. Nobody would be allowed to move past those lines until the ball is touched or reaches the target zone, the area from the 20-yard line to the goal line. The next proposal would also impact the kickoff. After only 5.2% of onside kicks were recovered in 2023, and just two surprise onside kicks, the competition committee is looking for some give and take. The new rule would allow the kicking team to utilize an unbalanced formation, with six players on one side of the kicker and four on the other to raise the odds of a recovery. But in order to do so, the kicking team would be required to declare their intentions of an onside kick before the play. That's necessary since that other kickoff proposal has a new setup zone. As a result of these proposals, touchbacks could also change. 
If the ball is kicked into the end zone, the receiving team gets it at the 35-yard line. If the ball is kicked into the target zone and rolls into the end zone, the receiving team possession would start at the 20-yard line. If all this feels a little complicated, you're not alone. It isn't easy to create more action with less injuries. But if these proposals end up being passed, it's because the league's owners believe this new approach will accomplish both. And like I said, he said the 35 in that clip. It's it was 30. amended when it passed. It's now to the 30. So now, if, if, if the ball is in the... What he said originally... The, uh, the players can't run until it's caught or it's touched caught. or yeah. in the target zone. Like if it lands and bounces. Right. He, he should have clarified that. Okay. Now, so if it – what if it goes out of bounds in the target zone? That's still a penalty, right? Yes. So if it lands in the target zone, it, it – It's a free ball. It's a free ball. Like if it lands and starts to roll? Yeah. Once it touches the ground, the blockers and stuff can move. It's like a – a squid but kick, essentially. If it's in the target zone, unless the kick, unless the it, they changed the rule recently where easy, even if the ball landed before, well, no, that's not true. If if the so if the ball lands inside the the ten yard line, you got to pick it up and run it. Yeah, because it's a free ball, or you could let it roll into the end zone. But at that point, it, there's no advantage. This is encouraging kick returns. Right, because if it goes into the end zone, it's actually because it. It's been the 25. It's the 20 now if it rolls. It's now either the 20 or the 30. It used to be the 20. It was the 20. It's been the 25. Now it's going to be, if you kick it into the end zone, it's on the 30. Well, two things on this. Was it day like that last year? No, it was 25. 25. And they wanted to make it 35, but they've made it 30 instead. So so now, I mean, for the... In recent years, it's been all about, for the most part, kicking it through the end zone. Yes. Well, now we're never going to see that again, at least not on purpose. Good. And so there will be returns. You know what that means? Special teams players, will you finally get some demons. You'll finally see them earning more Well, you don't want to hear what I think about this. Go ahead. You don't like it? It's confusing. Just just start. Just just take possession of the 30. No. Shut. Get rid of kickoffs. Shut up. Get rid of them. Shut up. Get rid of them. Why would you want to cut somebody's job like that? What is the purpose? What's the purpose? Um, to I, th- I actually like it. I think this yeah, is going to create some excitement on the play. Shut up! <laughs> I'm telling you. Just I get rid of it. Should... Take the bu- take after a, after a score, you get possession of well, 30. But that's not happening. But I, what I like about this, <laughs> Tyvis, what do you think about this? What, what is your opinion on this? It's confusing, but once we get used to it, what I do mean, you think? Of- I like I like it because it does give you the opportunity to see kick returns. Um, I tell you what, it. it Whoever you could better be good with your hands on this one. Wow! Because if you not, no, you're right. I'm saying wow. Oh, you I better. thought you yeah, were yeah, saying yeah. like pause. No, wow. no, no. But yeah, you got to you got to be able to two gaps. Somebody throw them to the side to be yeah. able to make a play. Um, it does take the collisions out. Obviously, people will still try to run straight through you at for five yards apart. But obviously, they can't get that. So I have that ADD down. and I zoned out. So what is the if why would why not just kick it through the end zone like they do? Because anyway? you'll get it at Dead the thirty. The it's gonna be at the thirty. Whereas if you if it lands in the between the twenty and the goal line, yeah, you either have to return it or if it rolls into the end zone. In that if it if you drop it into two and it rolls into the end zone, the you offense starts at twenty. You can't pick it no, up. No, you can, but <laughs> if, if you're you know whatever or you get or you get down to the end zone, it's encouraging it's at you the 20. to return the ball. So it's essentially you know what this sounds like to me. It sounds like the NBA in season tournament to me. Just a bunch I, of nonsense. I like it. It is it is it, very complicated. It makes it and, safer without eliminating. And it's it. very unusual for the NFL to make such a this is a pretty drastic, drastic rule change. Very drastic. It is well, and it's very one complicated. Angle, this is a one year trial. Yeah. This was adopted for one year. They're gonna revisit it to vote on whether or not to make it a full time Good. Next year, they'll just start at the 30. Or if it's going to yeah. go back to how it was. The commissioner apparently <laughs> liked it. was pushing for it. I, yeah. I'm going to be interested to see if we're going to see some trickery on these. Like, you can have two return guys, right? Well, let me, let me take this tag board full. And, uh, Steve, watch. This was from the St. Louis Battlehawks this year. It'll replay in one sec. But this was a double reverse they took to the house uh, last season. This was one of the ones that went off. But there you could have two returners back there. You could do whatever you want. This started with one returner. He's going to catch it, go to the left, 
a little reverse action, and this guy's going to take it to the crib. So there, there definitely is some. I mean, we have that now, though. You can do that now. Oh, he got it. You see a lot of double reverse. Not a lot, but you see double reverses now. I'm just saying you can get a little more creative now in ways that maybe you weren't able to previously under the right because there's more opportunities to return the ball. And in recent years, there, as you said, it was only 20% returns. Well, that number's going to go. What percentage of, re- of returns were there in that league? Uh, give me a sec. I can look that up. Bring the wedge and the wedge busters I back. Mean, I, I like it. I think it's interesting. <laughs> there I, you go, Jason. Bring the wedge busters back. They put that three-man wedge. You got that dude that run down and run straight through the heart of him, yep. throw himself right at his head. Yep. Boom! Concussion for everybody. <laughs> get up, smell the salt, and get back in there because it ain't no such thing as a concussion. Or just give the ball to 30, and off you go. Uh, get that would help the offense again. This this could help Ooh. the offense, but it could also help the defense. This rule could help the defense because if you have a good kicker that can place the ball, I, you're starting at the 20. I don't have a problem with it because, yeah. it, like I said, you, it shows you you can still sh- throw your dude to the side yeah. and go out there and make a tackle. Right, right, right. Now, Make sure you're careful how you tackle this man because it will be east and west. Right. So please make sure that you don't hip drop him. That's uh, the yeah. only thing on this. I don't want to see no guys get a 15-yard penalty and getting fined 25K. So maybe they do need to just yeah. put it at the third. And what's interesting is it's a big advantage for the return guy because he's in motion. Everybody else can't move. They're mm-hmm. just – they got to go, and he's in motion Which means that moving. a lot of the times the tackles is going to be hip drops. Probably. Mike? Uh, two more rules real quick. Yeah. I want to touch on before we talk Cavs for a sec and then Guardians, but you can now challenge a third time if only one of your two first two challenges are right. successful and they've pushed the trade deadline back one week. Oh, they did do that today? One week. Not the two weeks that Andrew Barry proposed. The one week. It's now week nine. It's better. I don't know why they just didn't do it the two weeks. <laughs> They'll move it again when they add the 18th. 18th. Yeah. Yep. I need an 18th game. We need that. Thoughts on the challenge. That means that they the get rid of a deadline. preseason game, right? Good. Thoughts like on the challenge. I think it's it used to be you had if you got both your challenges right, you get a third challenge. I think if you now get, as long as you get one of the two, you get a third. If you get all your challenges right, you should keep getting challenges. I why, agree with that. Why too. should you be punished yes. if they keep screwing up? Right. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> no. I, so if you get one right, you get the other. You I don't think we one. should. I don't think we should have any challenges. I think there should be an eye in the sky who's correcting all bad calls immediately. Instead of wasting time with challenges, and now the referee's got to go look at the video. There should be an extra ref at each game in the booth, seeing high def. And if he, if if the call is an well, obvious have, mistake, then why have it. officials on the field at all? Just call it from the booth. <laughs> well, no, because you can't. They're not going to. They're not going to see everything all the time. You got to have a lot of officials. But if that official sees something that's egregiously wrong yeah. on the field, he, he if he can, and if if it's too close that you can't fix it in thirty seconds, Leave move on. Move on. That's <laughs> right. All right, let's talk a little Cavs, guys. If you want to see a Cavs game in the I'm coming days. I'm talking Guardians. Sure. Let's get to the Guardians. No? We'll do Guardians next. We'll spend 10 All minutes right. in the Cavs. We'll finish the show with some Guardians over-unders. If you want to see a Cavs game or a Guardians game, you better be using Game Time app to buy your tickets with killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from their seat, and their best price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Just download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Once again, create an account, redeem promo code Locked On for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. We spent half an hour yesterday. Uh, being pretty harsh on the Cavs for their performance against Miami on Sunday, so it would be a disservice if we didn't at least acknowledge the fact that they beat Charlotte last night by 20 points. Marcus Morris uh, was kicked out of the game for a flagrant two foul, led a little spark, led, I don't want to call it a comeback, but led a <coughs> spirit. Don't call it a comeback. But what'd you make of the game last night? How badly did the Cavs? Um, it was about sh- to be bad. I, I, I got to tell it. you. I didn't even know for sure that Charlotte was still in the NBA. Where'd you think they went? I thought maybe they left town <laughs> and went to, I don't know. Uh, who cares? Charlotte's the worst <laughs> team, one of the worst teams in the NBA. They're not barely an NBA well, team. you'd care if they lost that game. <laughs> yeah, you would have. No, I wouldn't because there's yes, 10 games left and I want the playoffs. I, I'm back to where I was at the beginning of the year. Nothing the Cavs do the rest of the season matters. If Donovan Mitchell is healthy for the playoffs, then maybe they have a chance to do something. They have no shot of beating the Celtics in the playoffs. They have no shot of beating the Bucks in the playoffs. And they have no shot of beating the Knicks in the playoffs. They could beat any other team, right? It, well, probably can't beat Philly either. And the other teams Miami. they could beat in the first round, who can't they beat Miami? Can they beat Miami? They could beat Orlando or Indiana, right? 
Yes. If, if that's Donovan basically what we're down to. Yes. That's it. We got this guy who looks like a donner, and, and, that's, and that's that. I mean, they played Charlotte. Who gives a crap? Has Charlotte ever <laughs> – the last time Charlotte was relevant, Larry Johnson was dressing his grandmama. I mean, that, that's the last time they were a relevant basketball team. This game has zero value, zero meaning. It's good that Evan Mobley's back. I did, did a decent job. You guys have take anything out of this? Does it matter in any way? What was Charlotte's name before they went to the Hornets? The whole, Bob Bobcats. Bob Bobcats. Bobcats. That, that was awful. That was awful. <laughs> they had Gerald Wallace over the there. Uniforms uh, were terrible. The colors were terrible. <laughs> the or- you ain't like that orange. Oh, red and blue. And, oh, God. They're bad. They're bad. <laughs> the cat, listen, the Cavs game was – it started off bad, I tell you that. It wasn't it, – it, it was not going great out the gate. My boy DG still wasn't looking – Great, and I don't understand. Now, you finished with a double-double. I'm pretty sure you had 10 assists. It was nice to see Allen still doing this thing. I think he had 17 and 13, so that's great. You know, as critical as I am of Mobley being in the starting lineup, I think he has 17 and 7, and he's becoming more efficient. I think he was 8 of 12, so that's actually really good. With 8 assists, so that, you know, they swinging the ball around. I think but, that's a typo. I'll be honest, I think that's a typo. Oh, uh, so he got 8 assists? No, he had 14. He had eight assists. He had 14, po- uh, 17 points and eight assists. He had eight assists. Look that at is that. not a typo. Look at that. That's actually, that's nice. Now, nah, it's against Charlotte. You know, Charlotte so. has the worst <laughs> point differential in the entire league. Yeah, it's you know again. It, no, but listen, the good news is that y'all snapped the loser streak. And Marcus Moore is getting ejected, brought some, put some fighting, y'all, and y'all decided to come out there and play even harder. So that that's nice. But it's Charlotte. It shouldn't even been in that situation. Y'all need to hold yourself to a higher standard to where you don't need something like that to happen to get you fired up. But I get it. When you're going up against somebody as terrible as Charlotte, sometimes I've been in a situation where you're playing a lower tier of a team and it's like hard to find motivation or inspiration to win that game. So thank God Marcus Morris did what he did. But you guys cannot play down to y'all competition. If y'all want to get to where y'all want to go, y'all need to go out there and start dominating now. It's not a switch that you could just flip and just turn it up right then and there. That's not the case. Y'all need to finish this season off strong. That's my take on the Cavs. Mm. March is a grind. We knew Ugh. it was going to be unbearable. This, no, I mean the schedule. You just mean the games. I mean the schedule. <laughs> the logistics of their schedule. Yeah. They got chewed up by it. I think we talked about on the show that we would know by the end of March what kind of team they are. Well, we're getting the answer. They're getting, they're getting their asses beat. Yeah. Just by the travel in the, <coughs> the different city, different day type thing. The, ultimately, they got to get healthy. And they, they needed a win last night just to flush Miami. Worst True. performance of the year, just to yeah. get that out of them. It doesn't matter who was the worst team. It doesn't matter who it is. You got to go out there and win a game and just feel good about yourself again. Okay. But they got to get Donovan. They got to get Max back. And JB has got to figure out some sort of rotation. I mean, that's the most alarming part of all of this to me is we got nine games to go. I have no idea what JB <laughs> rotation is. <laughs> no idea. Like with most, most teams, especially a playoff team by this point in the season, you know at the six-minute mark, this dude's probably coming in the game. This guy's going out. Mm-hmm. You know the, the matchups that work best. You know what to expect. I have no idea what to expect. And Evan and Jarrett start together, but they don't really play together. They're, they're still right. patty-caking these guys and taking one off and putting one on. And, like, nothing just fits. And they are out of time. And until Donovan gets back and Max gets back and they have a couple of games, like you want, you want to take that one or two games before the end of the <coughs> season, especially the last game, and rest everyone and get them off their feet and not have any silly injuries going into the playoffs. I don't know if they're going to have that luxury. I think they got to run through the tape on this just because they need to see what they've got and they need to try and figure out some semblance of a rotation. <laughs> and the fact that we don't have that is – unbelievable and it's not all jb's fault like they've had a ton of injuries you can't help that Mm -hmm. but it's crazy that we're sitting here on march 26th and we don't know what the Cavs' rotation is they got 10 games left by the way 10 games if if the Cavs fall on their face in the playoffs again this year which i think they're expecting at this i mean right now they get indiana in the first round so that they they should be in indiana but if they they do you think jb gets fired yes you think uh kobe gets fired possibly the Kobe thing, Kobe's going to be tied to Donovan. Right. And if Donovan, I, I'm, I keep trying to write a column. How you go? What do you mean you keep trying? Because I want to write Donovan's best course of action is to sign an extension. 
But I can't write that the way that they're playing. Like, you just... <laughs> but I'm, like, dying to write. Listen, he's played the best basketball of his career these two years in Cleveland. Yeah. And this is the best spot for him. And this team gives him the best opportunity to win. But it's hard to write that when you see what happened in Miami. Like, how can you say that? He didn't play. But that's my point. Yeah. The supporting cast, this He's is their opportunity enough. to show him. They, he, and they're not his, doing Well, it. the majority of his supporting cast is hurt, too. Well, Darius is not back. hurt. Darius is out there. Allen's out there. Jared's out there. Max is not. Okay, but, like... He's who's Max's, getting a lot of money, Max by the way. Got here. He's not yeah. really a core piece. Oh, uh, here, paid let like me ask one. you this: Jason. Here we go with the Evan, core four. Evan, Darius, and Jared and uh, Donovan. Right now, are supposed to be the core. Let me ask you this: I know this is more of an off-season question, and it is a, a massive, massive if. But if Donovan Mitchell signed an extension, mm-hmm. if you were the Cavs this off-season, let's say this this season just doesn't go well the rest of the way. And Donovan says, hey, I'm in. Yeah. He signs a long extension. Would you then trade in the offseason Darius, Evan, or both? And, you and JB. You, what do you think you're going to get for I, Darius? You probably – You're not getting anything for Darius. Well, you get something, but no, not, not – Not okay. really. You're, you're not getting – Not really. Coming off the season he's had, yeah. the highest contract in team history. Right. So, you are not getting – you All have right, got so to – Would you trade Darius. Mobley no. to change it up? No, I don't think so. I, I don't – I don't, because just because Donovan signs the extension doesn't mean you've got him for four years, five years, whatever it is. It means you got him for one extra year. Well, but that's it. What you about, get him for one no, extra I year. No, I got you. What about the coach situation? Well, the coach would be fired. Donovan doesn't want the coach anyway, right? I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it, JB's future is dependent on mm-hmm. how this playoff run goes. Kobe's future is probably dependent on what Donovan does because yeah. if Donovan wants out, this trade is going to be like a wrecking ball. Yeah. They, fi- they lose five years of control of their draft on a player who's not even going to be here for those years. Yeah. They'll, they'll recoup something <coughs> for him, but it won't be a lot. And then you look at the, the president who put it together and say, yeah. why'd well, you do you. this? Well, if, so, but, but we're, we're a long way from yeah, that point. Yeah. I don't want to – If everyone Donovan thinks I'm wants the out, Grim Reaper anyway. If Donovan wants out, that'll be, it won't be that bad because – LeBron is a free agent, and they could just draft oh, yeah. Bronny, so mm. you could have you could. LeBron and, and Bronny. And Jason, that is why Tyvis is not one of the hosts of the Ultimate Cash <laughs> Show, which at 5 o'clock today you can tune in to Jason and myself, break down the Cavs' new practice facility, what's next, how it can be salvaged, and whether or not it's too late. Also, coming up on Thursday, make sure you tune in to the Ultimate 216 Show with Earl the Pearl on Friday. Ultimate Brown Show with G. Bush, and make sure you check out the Ultimate Guardian Show. The debut yesterday was Zach and Bull. I am so excited about the start of baseball season. Opening night is perfect. The Cubs play at 7.30. The Guardians play at 10.15. Now the games are only two and a half hours. The Cub game should end just as the Guardian game starts. And I am staying up till one in the morning or whatever time the Guardians (laughs) end on opening night Thursday. Well, this is the thing. It's something that you forgot to say that's more important than opening night on Thursday. What's that? And at the fact that the Mega Million is one point one billion dollars, and That's once tonight, right? once I hit it, I got I got y'all. I Thank love you. I got everybody. He's in. got us. He's got. I'm Thomas gonna buy a best. ticket. <laughs> Thomas is the best. Ticket. Jason uh, can't even. He ooh. can't handle his own water. Good. He, <laughs> he's out of control. So the season obviously starts Thursday for the Guardians. Yes. We'll do some big picture team stuff tomorrow, but today we're gonna do some player props <coughs> heading into the season. For the Guardians, we had yes. 10 offensive player props, 8 pitching props. You tell me the over with the happy face, the under with the sad face. Okay. Is this Very for simple. the season or Thursday? No, for the for season. The season. Okay. This is for the full season. It's hard to tell the difference in my happy and sad face. They're, Let me see. They yours. look the same. They do look the same. They don't look much different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jason, the one in your left hand is your happy face. Okay, thank you. All right, first off, we'll start with the guy, oh, the on. leader, Jose Ramirez. Over under 27 and a half home Jose, runs. Jose, Jose, Jose. What did he Jose, have last year? 20, Jose, 20. Jose. By the way, before we officially start this, shouldn't I haven't been on since Miles Straw got waived? Oh, my God. He's yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's a great Yes, he team. did. He's in the minors. He's in AAA. He, he cleared waivers. Cleared waivers. He got waived. He got put on waivers. Put on waivers. Sorry. Nobody was going Sorry, to you're touch right. that. He got, I didn't use the terminology. Well, that's a great tease. We'll do it at the end of the segment. Okay, very Save good. Save it for the end of the uh, segment. Give me the number again. 
27 and a half home runs for Jose Ramirez. Over. He better over. be over. Yeah. Last season, <laughs> Tyvis, you asked how many he had last season. He had 24 last. He, yeah, he has no choice. He better be over. Better be over. Confidence level, he'll go over. <laughs> uh, 80%. 58%. Mm. He's getting older. He is. You said what? 80. 58. You're crazy. Uh, he didn't do it last year. <laughs> He's had a ton of injuries in his career. Not a ton. He's played 170 70 percent sure. He played 156 games last season. And he so, hit 24? Yeah. Yeah. Now, he was dinged up for some of those, but. he was. Dig- He's played a lot. He's played injured quite a bit. Second half of seasons. Yeah. Including last year. Go ahead. Next up, sticking with the home run theme, Stephen Kwan, eight and a half. Under. <laughs> you oh, no, I, I you on the same thing I'm on. <laughs> I, I, what did he hit last year, like two? He had five last season. Oh, he had five? I'm going to be I'm gonna optimistic. Go over. I'm, I'm going to go over. over. Yeah. He had five in 158 games. Are, are we going the G. Bush route of everyone's getting 5,000 <laughs> I don't want, I don't want to do Trending that. Trending in that direction. I don't want to be that guy that does that. I got to be different to you. Um, yeah. All right. I'm going to be different. More confident on Jose or Stephen Kwan hitting that number? Jose. Steve, I mean, no, yeah. Wait, not getting it? I think it's 50-50 <laughs> that he gets over it, but I went – I he's – He's conscious of it. Yes, and he's spent the winter. Yes, and he is such a good hitter. He's yeah. gonna get he eight. Can pick ex- his spots. He's gonna get eight exactly. Remember how Ichiro? I mean, he's not Ichiro, but Ichiro would pick his spots. Ichiro could hit it out of the stadium anytime he wanted. Yeah, it's crazy. It was. It was weird watching him hit batting practice. Yeah, he, he, he could hit it out of the stadium anytime he wanted. I, I, I think he's gonna pick some spots. Where he gets a, a little more aggressive than he's been in the past. I'm going to say he gets to 10. I think he gets 10 also. He's going to get 10. 8 exactly. All right. All right. Josh Naylor's up next. He had uh, 17 last season. His over under set at 23 and a half. What's his career high? I was close. Was like last 20. Year. Naylor's career high. Give me one sec. I can sort this bowl. His career high was 20 in 2022. He's it's never funny. Hit now, he's missed time with injury over the years, so that's part of it. But you look at him, you'd think he'd be more he of a home run be, hitter. Yeah. You know? Um, I'm going to take the under on that, but I think it's close. I say a 22. Yeah, I think, I think that 20 to 23 range, I don't know that he gets over. How old is he? He's younger than you think. He's 26. It's hard to believe he's only 26. It feels like he's been around and forever. And this is his last year of arbitration. Is that right? Or he's got one more to go? I think he's got one more to go. I think he's got one year left. Uh... I am – Josh really brought me around last year by hitting the lefties. Yeah. I'm hoping he – it's just about health. I think if he stays healthy for the whole season, he'll do it. What's it, 23 and a half? 23 and a half. It's he, close. He's going to finish – I think he's going to set his career high, but it might end up being 22-23. I hope that he embraces the DH because I think it's where he's going to spend Manzardo a lot of time. Once Manzardo comes up – He's going to spend a lot of time at DH, I think. And, and that, it should – and that would some, help him. It would help him, but some guys hate that. I know. And they don't handle it well. And but, I hope – and he's he's had some DH at bats, yeah. but he's played a lot in the I field. Gotta look at, I'm going to look at his numbers as, as a DH. DH. If look he would embrace that, because it would it help be him. really good for he him. He does a lot of those stretches at the, first base. That's got to be – Yeah, I, I just I'm think – I'm going to be positive about this. I got 25 home runs for Josh Naylor this year. I that like would that. Be, would be How nice. about his brother? He had 11 – in 67 games last oh, season. Oh, I don't care what it is. 18 and a half. Ooh. Oh, that's, a, that's an under. <laughs> that's an under. There's going to be some regression with oh. him. Oh. I am very high on Bo this year. I am year, too. But that's, that. For a catcher, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> I got him with 15. I think he finishes probably close to what he had last year. Oh, so what do you have, 11 and 67? Wait a minute. 11 and 67 games. Yeah, I, I think he's between 11 and He only played 67 games last year? Correct. That's it? You know what? No, Screw you, that. Yeah. I'm on a roll. I'm G. Bush in it. Yeah, I'm you the are. I'm G. Bush of the Guardians. I yeah, just picked them to not win their division, and yet I'm picking them to hit all these home runs. We call them, we're talking baseball. We call them G. Bull. G. Bull. G. Bull. Uh, same number for Andre Semenez. 18 and a half home runs. I'll take Jimenez. that. I'll take that. <laughs> he better. Now, all these over, I think the numbers are good, because I think all of these are, like, right around the number. Yeah. I, I think the Naylor one's way out of line. I think that's way too high. What, the AT? I, I'm yeah. going under on Jimenez. I'm going over. I'm going over, too, because I got he, be, he better. He better. I think he's going to have a big year. He has to. 
Yeah, I think I, I'm really he high. He have a big year and still hit 17 home runs. Sure, yeah. <laughs> How many did he hit last year? He did not he have a good 15 year. 15 last season. And he did not he have a good 15? year to play. No. Oh, he's Five. going over for sure. Yeah, I think he's got 20 in them. Mm. Now, let me ask you this. That's the last of the home run over-unders. Of all the home runs, whether you took the over or the under, which one were you most confident picking? Jose. No, Jimenez. I wasn't that confident in really any of them. I'm most confident in Bo Naylor on the under. I just think that's absurd. <laughs> I'm most confident on Jose on the over. I'm most confident in Jimenez on the over. It's going to happen. Three different answers. i like to see that. All right, moving on to some different offensive statistics. How about over under 26 and a half stolen bases for Jose Ramirez? He had 28 under. last season. Under. How old is he now? Jose. That's how he's going to stay healthier is cut down those stolen. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's not going to run. He's 31. He's reaching that age where yeah. guys stop running. Remember yeah. Mike Trout. Like all, and oh, Mike yeah. Trout's still getting hurt. But yeah. once the guys hit their 30s, like you got to – that part of the reason he gets hurt is because he's, he's – Crazy on the bases, crazy in a good way. But yeah. he, you know what? He, he it's in his nature. He's not going to stop. I get it, he but not I, gonna, he's not going to stop. I think he gets. I think he gets around twenty this year. He's I think at, that's who age. he is. He's just. He's, he's at the stop. age where he's getting to that cliff. He's mm. not going to stop. Steals. On steals. Until he get caught, he ain't going. Until All he right. get caught so a lot, he ain't going to stop. Two unders and an over. What number would you feel confident taking for stolen bases? Twenty. I think he's going to have around twenty this year. Around Eighteen 20? to twenty. Yeah. Eighteen okay. to twenty. Will and then Brennan. By, by next year, he'll be down to 15, yep. and then he'll be yep. stop stealing bases. We had Tom Hamilton on the show yesterday. Great yep. interview if you missed it. Hamilton is, uh, is a one of a kind, an all time <coughs> great. Legend. He mentioned Will Brennan and how impressed he had been with Will Brennan seeing his work off the field. Over 115 and a half hits for Brennan this season. No. He had exactly 115 last year. Yeah, I'm sick. Surprised he had that. Y'all yeah, sick. No, I'm, I don't think he's going to get that many. He's not going to play enough. Listen, the whole think. team going to hit better this year. I just don't think he's going to play enough. He played in 136 games last year. He's season. not playing that many. Uh, <laughs> I just don't uh, think he's going to play that as yeah, much. Yeah, no, I, I'm with you. He's, he's not going to play against lefties at all. And I, I just – Ramon Laureano is probably going to play almost every day. Yeah. And, and Quan's going to play every day. Yeah. So you essentially have two spots for DH and center field for Brennan. And then once Manzardo comes up, then you're really down to one spot. Right. And I think Freeman's going to take Freeman slowly. I yeah, think he's going hopefully. to become yeah. the center fielder. They still have Florial they in still, the mix. They want to get a look at Florial, but I think ultimately Freeman's probably yeah. going to take hold of that job. Florial's the next guy we're going to talk about. Before you take that, Steve, Jason, I'm curious. What have you heard about Freeman's progression Turning from an infielder to an outfielder, really good. especially Manning center field. Really good. He had a really good camp. His stock, he, he did very well for himself this spring, just in showing his versatility, showing he could handle it. It wasn't too much for him. He's always had a good bat. He's like, he, he could hit 280 in the majors every year. Uh, but finding the spot to put him was tricky because he's not really a shortstop. But yeah, I think he's done very well for himself. And that's why I think they want to get a look at Florial. He's out of options. They traded for him. But Florial did not have a good spring, and I, I, mm. I suspect Freeman's going to emerge as a center fielder yeah. by you know Memorial Day, if not before. I wouldn't be surprised if Florial were DFA'd by before the end of April. You might be right. Yeah. Well, you that's might, not going to bode well Freeman for the next over under. Yeah. Emerges. Yeah, that's but. not going to bode well. Florial over under seventy five and a half hits this season. No. If you think he's gone by April, he'd have to have the greatest April. I'm about to say it's definitely. If he gets off to a good start, then it could change things. Yeah, but. I will take the under on that. I agree. Yeah. I, I think he lasts longer than April, but I. I'm I don't, saying if he gets off to a one for twenty two start, he's gone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, no, I don't think he will be. <laughs> no, gone. no. Okay, one for in April is cold. They'll, they're going to give him at least. Like this isn't Carlos Gonzalez and Hanley Ramirez who were at the end of their time right. in the majors. I think they give him till at least May. Okay. But I don't think I don't think Florial's on the roster at the end of the year. Florial feels like a four A player. Yeah. All right. Last one I lied. There was one more offensive one. Yeah. Back to Jose. We did his home runs. We did his stolen bases. Yeah. A hundred and eighty three and a half hits. I'm all in on everything. I'll take that. I'll take that. I got hundred and ninety hits. He's gotta stay healthy. If he stays he had 172 healthy. last season. So this is 10, 11, 11 and a half more hits. I'll take it. Take it to the bank. 
Yeah. All overs. And the last one, Stephen Kwan, 185 and a half hits. Oh, that's 14 that's and a half more. I'm about to say. That's two, I got 200 hits for Kwan this year. Yep. 200. Now, you said that last season. I did. And I was wrong. But I'm, I'm back on that again this now year. Now, you took the over on his home runs, though. Are you concerned that him. No, I don't think he's going to. contact for He power. hit five home runs last year. I got him with 10. It's not like I'm saying he's going to get 25 home runs. No, I mean, but I do think that he is going to sacrifice a few hits to try and swing up, swing harder, however you want to put it. But I, I still, I, I yeah. think this is a big year for him. I don't yeah. know how the camera is. I think it's a big year for him. I agree. Ty, <laughs> did you take the over on that too? I couldn't see you. Oh, yeah, yes. I definitely did, yeah. All right, so that concludes the offensive section. Okay. Let's go to the pitching section now. Mm. Shane Bieber is fascinating. Tom Hamilton said he wouldn't be surprised if the Guardians move him at some point. Jay even, not suggested, but floated out the theory that He's not 100% confident he won't be traded before Thursday. <laughs> I'd be shocked. This is assuming shocked. he's not traded by Thursday. Over under 152 and a half strikeouts for well, Shane Bieber. Just for the Guardians or even if he gets traded? His season. I think it should be his season. Sure, let's do the full season. Okay. That's, uh, a, that's an over. I, I, he's, he looks good. He looks really wow. sharp right now. It's a big year for him. And he, he needs a contract be. year. He, he so. better. The only way, I mean, obviously. He had 107 last year for context. Yeah, but he, yeah, how many he's hurt. He yeah. 128 innings. Yeah, I mean, unless he gets hurt, he's going to get This is kind of easy. Like, it, what's, what it's I feel most confident in now, yeah. I feel most confident in that one now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And All then right, what about getting, Gavin Williams getting, and his strikeout home. numbers? 136 and a half. I don't he's like already he's starting the year on the injury I was list. about to say. He's already hurt. But that's not a very They're high They're going to be number. careful with his innings, especially coming off an injury. Yeah, but I mean. He but, should be back in a couple of weeks. Yeah, he's not I He's not going to miss a ton of time. I'll take the over on that. I'll take the over. I think he's around 150 All right, I'm with year. you. I think he's around 150. It's close. I'm Tyus, worried about the injury. you're saying no. Why are you saying no, Tyus? I'm saying no because I think it's going to. I just think it takes pitchers a little bit, a while to get into their groove. Um, and I think that he might struggle a little bit, and people going to get sour on him. But then towards the end, he'll turn it up, but I just don't think it'll be 136. Mm-hmm. He had 81 strikeouts in 82 innings last season, almost a strikeout per inning. So, I actually uh, would have thought it would be better uh, per uh, inning. I thought yeah. it was too, but... The strikeout uh, per inning is good, up. but it's not lights out. Say next it. Next up. Say Trist- it. Tristan McKenzie. I don't even, don't even care what you ask. I'm worried about him. Yeah, he not too. have surgery last I year. Too. Stop but it. But he made it through <laughs> stop it. Spring. Yeah, well, yeah. I'll take uh, the I'll take I'm I'll, gonna go over. Yeah, I'm gonna take the over. Again, it's just will he stay healthy? I'm a little nervous about that, but all these guys are good strikeouts. Isn't that just in his pitch? Yeah. Innings pitch, correct. How many he had more than a strikeout per inning last year, didn't he? Tristan McKenzie, let me find. Tristan McKenzie had 16 strikeouts in 16 innings. Oh, that's right. He barely pitched. I forgot. Yeah. What about the year before? In 2022, let me pull up that tab. Give me one sec. Well, I apologize. No, he had right. 190 strikeouts in 191 innings. Oh, wow. Right. right He's right almost along. exactly a strikeout per yeah, inning guy good. over the last that's couple good. of seasons. Uh, speaking of the Guardians rotation, Steve, don't take this uh, <coughs> next. But Zach Meisel reported the starting pitching matchups. This is their starting rotation for Stephen Vogt in his first five games. He's yep. going Bieber in game one. Yep. Logan Allen game two. Oh, wow. wow. Bybee game three. Really? Carrasco four and McKenzie five. My boy. Oh, it, he interesting. Was... Must have something to do with some of them. Why Carrasco before McKenzie? That's what I want to know. Now, he also tweeted a follow-up real quick. McKenzie is starting the final spring training game this afternoon. Well, that's why. So, I'm not oh, sure if it's just a timing it's issue, the... but – Probably yeah. how the rest falls. Today is Tuesday. And the fourth game is on Monday. He could have still Sunday would have been his regular turn. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. There, there's Saturday, an off Sunday. day Sunday, isn't there? Because it's thir- it's a three game series. Oh no no no, no. they play it's six a four games game series. Oh, it's a that's right. It's four, four games game in Oakland. Oakland. Okay. Sunday would be McKenzie's regular turn if he went today. <laughs> if he's going today, maybe it has something to do. Maybe McKenzie pitches better in Seattle than Oakland or something like yeah, that. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Or maybe it's Carrasco, because Oakland's a better pitcher's park than Seattle. Yeah. And maybe they're I mean, worried you, about Carrasco you, and well, Seattle. Fly, which lineup would you rather have Carrasco face, Oakland right. or Seattle? Exactly. Well, <laughs> uh, Seattle's lineup's not great, but Oakland, <laughs> Oakland. is Oakland. terrible. <laughs> All right, next up, Bieber. We did his strikeouts. Is he going to stay healthy? Another big question. 170 and a half innings pitched for I'm Shane. I'm all in on Bieber this <laughs> that's year. That's a, a lot. <laughs> These days, that's a lot of innings. It is, but he's – 
the Guardians don't handle, at least under Tito, we'll see under vote, they don't handle their pitchers like a lot of teams no, that's where true. it's five and fly. And, and let's face it, he ain't going to be here next year, so they're not worried about yeah. next year with him. Yeah, I, I, I'm all in on it. It's true. It's true. It's true. Yeah. it's true. Look at the way, I mean, the Brewers put a saddle on CC Sabathia for three oh my months. Oh, God. That and was just crazy. just ran that man into the ground. That's messed up. Who got run into the ground more? Sabathia? Kluber. <laughs> by the Brewers. Or Kluber. I was going to say or Kluber. Kluber. Kluber was never the same pitcher. Never. Ever. Well, neither was Andrew Miller, and neither yep. was Rolfus Chapman. Yep. Honestly. Yep. All right, go ahead. He's honking. Logan <laughs> Allen. <laughs> yeah. Over under a 3.30 ERA this season. Uh, I'm so, going. I'm, so well, over is bad. Angry, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going angry. I'm, I'm, go- I'm not an old Logan Allen believer. He's my – You don't I, like him? I like him the least of all their pitchers. Yes. Dang. Same. Uh, you know what? I think he's a, he's a decent pitcher. He's okay. But he's, he's not a, a – He's a fourth starter in the majors. Funny. Fourth or fifth starter. Yeah. Because I'm going through the pitches. I think he's the least one I like, too. Yeah. I mean, outside of Carrasco, obviously. Well, yeah. Well, when they're yeah. healthy. Yeah. I mean, he's uh, – Well, we love yeah. Carrasco, but as, as a pitcher. Right? Williams, McKenzie. Yeah. But yeah. I see Logan I, Allen yeah. is like a, a 3-8 to a 420, somewhere in that range. Yes. Yeah, right. I think that's very accurate, actually. Go ahead, Mike. Tanner Bybee, same number, 330. Oh, I'll take we all under. flipped. <laughs> I'm, on, I'm flipped. all in on Bybee. Yeah. <coughs> I, in fan. the long run, I like Gavin Williams a pinch more than I like Bybee, but I like them both a lot. Bybee's growing on me very quickly. I mean, it, I like if healthy, McKenzie, Bybee, and Williams is it's a pretty nasty, nasty one, yes. two, three. Yeah, absolutely. It's pretty nasty. You know, I'm... I leave out Kluber. Oh, Kluber. I leave man, out Bieber because he's not going to be here next year. Oh, but I hope McKenzie's for the next few years. This year, man. Two more. Yeah. Emmanuel Classe, forty-five and a half saves. A little worried about him. He has had to work a lot the last two years. I'm yeah, going under. I'm going under because that's a big number. That's a really big number. Oh, they're going to play a lot of tight games. But he always. Last he year he blew even, 10 saves. Yeah. I say he had to go. He How many had last year? Like he had a ton. He had 44 and a half last season. 44 and a half. What do you mean he had 44 and a half? Well. Uh, half so, a sorry, he had, he had 44 last season. Sorry, sorry. Oh. 44. <laughs> I bought him. I'm like, yeah, 44 and a half. <laughs> yep. He had 44 and a half. Not sacks. <laughs> <laughs> a half a save. Right, but he had like 55 opportunities yeah. or something. Yeah. I'm taking the under. I'm know. going under. I don't. That's a really big I'm going to go under, by, too. By the way, he if the Guardians... I'm, I'm hoping the Guardians play What's that? This ain't he pitched take. in 75 games. That's crazy. That's like every and other 75 day. high leverage, yeah. most, almost the Guardians, all high leverage. The Guardians will play better overall, so it won't... Right, but won't hope, hopefully they'll win a, a few games by more than one or two runs, and he won't have to pitch every game they're winning. Go ahead. Mike, last one. His record was three and nine, by the way. Yeah. He had seventy five. Yeah, appeals, I don't pay attention three to three and records, nine record. Well, nine losses is significant that's a lot when you're for a closer. When you're a closer. Yeah, yeah that's true. Uh, he pitched seventy two and two thirds innings, which is pretty crazy. Philip Walker would have got it. How many strikeouts oh did he have? He had sixty four strikeouts. Yeah, like that's not good. Appearances. No. Seven, 64 strikeouts and seventy two innings for Class A. Yeah, he should be around he should 80, have like 90. eighty. Yeah. Yeah. Put, I mean, put Phil out there. He would get it done. It's just man, all right, just last wins. one. Yeah. This one, the biggest long shot of them all. If you want to put a little money on it, this is the one. If you want to win legit money, this is got to be a mile win. straw thing, I think. No. no? <laughs> Over, under, half of a team no-hitter. So this could be individual or team for the Guardian staff. A no-hitter? Will they throw a no-hitter this season or not? Well, I, I haven't I, had one in 50 years. I don't so think it's – I'm, th- I'm going to go No. I, by the way, a team yeah. no-hitter is bogus. I totally agree. <laughs> Completely bogus. I Those totally should not agree. count as no-hitters. You want to give, give it its, its own little category, fine. It's not a no, It's a bogus stat because the greatness of a no-hitter is that one pitcher Did was able to thing. throw 110, 120, 140 pitches yeah. and get through it. When you're bringing in a bunch of high-leverage relievers at the end, that's not the same. Yeah. No. The last no-hitter was the perfect game by Len Barker, right? Yep. 82. Yep. Two. Yep. 82? I don't remember the year. I think we just passed some big anniversary. Yeah, we did. I want to say it was 82. I should know that. A you shouldn't have bought. I'm very game. disappointed you don't. I think it's 82. I even, I've even i talked to him about it a couple of times. We've been in charity softball games together. I want to throw a perfect game. Well, Len Barker did a perf- pitched a perfect game. Is it in, Was it in 82 that he pitched that? Uh, I wasn't looking. I oh, okay. I thought you were looking. Let me give you – let's – 
Let, let me follow up here on some Miles Straw stuff. So hey, do Miles Straw. I got yeah. some super chats, 81. and then I got one more thing I want to throw to you. It was 81, by the way, for Len Barker. That's a terrible job. Uh, I want to throw it to you guys regarding the Browns and potential streaming options for them coming up. So All give right. me your Miles Straw. Two cents. So I was very pleasantly surprised to hear about the Guardians putting Miles Straw on waivers. Obviously, he was going to clear waivers. Uh, I saw yesterday Tom Withers, and I know he's just doing his due diligence. He worked right for the AP. But Tom was like, we'll see if Miles Straw accepts his assignment to AAA. Well, if he didn't accept his assignment to AAA, he'd be saying goodbye to $20 million yep. over the next few years. <laughs> yep. So, of course, he was going to accept. And, of course, nobody was going to claim him on waivers. But it was worth it for the Guardians to put him out there. By some chance, somebody you I know mean, yeah. took the contract. So, he is going to just be the highest pay- paid player. Hopefully, he will just spend the next... He's in one of those weird situations. It's very rare that a player has a long-term extension and is playing in the... But there's, there's like, no options. Right. The only option is that they trade him to another team and the Guardians eat 80 to 90% of the salary. Or they take on another bad contract or something like right, that. Right. That's the only way. <laughs> Nobody's taking his contract as is I mean, because it's an awful contract. There is another path, but they don't seem to want to take it, where you just attach them to a good prospect or another good player, okay, and sure. the other team swallows but the money. But they've shown no indication. But they've shown no that. indication. Yes. Of, like, they will not do that. Now, what they should do, or the opposite of that, is if, we hope it doesn't come to this, but if at the trade deadline they're out of it, and they're trading Shane Bieber, they should say to the team, we'll take a little less in return if you take Miles Straw. Yeah. Now, you get less back. Right. But it might be worth it to get him off the payroll because they owe him $5 million this year, whatever it is. I think it's 6 or 7 the next year. The year after that, they owe him like 7 or 8 And then the year after that, there's an option, which of course they're not going to pick up, but they owe him a, pa- a buyout off of that. Yeah. So they owe him, he's got like about $20, 20 million million. Yep. in guaranteed money, which is crazy. Now listen, he should be in the majors, but he should be a backup outfielder, like a Kevin Pillar. You know, and when people would go crazy about his defense, my point was always like, okay, but guys who are great defensive players and can't hit, don't start. This is not 1978. Yeah. <laughs> you know, in 1978, if you played second base shortstop or center field, you could start even if you couldn't hit that much. But Miles Straw is arguably, along with his teammate Austin Hedges, the two worst hitters in baseball. Hey, hey, that's what World Series it? champion Austin Hedges. There we go. So, but I was—I never expected the Guardians to do this. I know Zach was surprised. Were you surprised too? Yeah. I mean, I they usually surprised. don't bite the bullet like this, they and they—they they, they they just, just did it last year. What do you mean they did it? Didn't they do it with Zanino? Yeah, but they don't want long-term contracts. Well, yeah, one yeah, year deal. Six million. Yeah. And now he's just going to play for Columbus until they can get somebody. Hey, to... I can go so see. So go to Columbus. Huntington and see Park. My... Now they could bring him back up at some point if, if they had injuries. But they finally said, and I don't. this never happens if Frank Hona's still here, right? Uh, oh, he was. I don't know. That's guy. a good question. That's a really good question. Yeah, I don't I, know the answer to that. I the Clippers know, ain't been popping since Fran Mill Reyes I mean, I, I, was, was there. I, I think Stephen Vogt was like – you know, I can't waste the bats on this guy. What do, you, what, what do you want me to do with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> what's funny is he was actually, it, it doesn't really matter, obviously. Having a good but spring. he was actually having a decent spring. Yeah, yeah. He was actually hitting the ball a little bit, but it doesn't mean well, anything. Which is funny because I, every time I talked to you and over there, it was yeah. Miles has to have a big spring here. He has yeah. to have a good winter. Yeah, yeah. And it, Well, he did all that. Yeah. And they shipped they were like, anyway. they, No, they're done. And that's yeah. good. It you is know, good. Give young guys an opportunity. I love that Rokio's on the roster and is going to get a chance to establish himself in short. I love that Tyler Freeman's on the roster and hopefully going to play. Like, he was on the roster last year, but they barely they played, played him. Yeah. It's time to, you know, you've been talking about all these kids forever. Let's see them play. Give them a chance. If they don't get it done, they don't get it done. But we got to see it. Bo D, uh, Bo. Uh, Bo Naylor. It is Bo. Mm-hmm. Bo Diaz used to be a catcher he back was. in the day. But Bo Naylor got his opportunity late last year and he took advantage of it. Yep. You know, he, he was really good. And we'll see if he can follow it up. Uh, but uh, I, I, think, I think everybody's down on the team, deservedly so. But I'll say this. They overachieved, Jason, in 2022. No doubt about it. Bet, oh, for sure. Right? Yeah. But they underachieved last year. Yeah. I think the reality of this team is somewhere in between. And there is no clear favorite in this division. I mean, Minnesota would be the clear favorite, I guess. But I'm not a big believer in the Twins. Good. I agree. They got two good starters that I like. Um, they got Joe Ryan and um, Ober. 
You like Ober? No, no, no. Uh, Lopez. Oh, Pablo Lopez. Lopez, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. And their lineups, you know, it's it's solid, but it's not spectacular. Their closers hurt to start the season. But if you, yeah, that's a big that's a big. And deal. he's really good. If you had to pick right now, who's going to win I'd the pick division? I would too. But if the if the Guardians pitching stays healthy, they can win this division. I'm going to tell you right now, my yeah. surprise pick to win the division it's is the not Tigers. the Guardians. It's the Tigers. Yeah, I could it's see the it. Tigers. I could see it because Miggy's off. The I'm, books. I'm buying into your Tigers. Will you? Yeah, they're a little better, and the Royals will be competitive. The Royals, the are White Sox. Be Terrible. White Sox. They're terrible. horrible. Uh, we right, got Mike. some super chats we got to get to. First off, Kyle Brenner, our uh, extracurricular graphic designer for DTR Outfits, says, extra cup of coffee for bowl this morning with three laughing emojis. I have never had a cup of coffee in my life. Nice. Wolf Rage gifted five memberships. Shout out to Wolf Rage. Mud. I the name gets cut off. It's too long. Mud yeah. loose. Says, Jason, can you ye yell at someone for being out of pocket? Bull, can you call someone a slappy again? Tyvis, can you hype me up one more time about Mike Vrabel? Jason never says out of pocket. That's not his term he uses. Well, you're out of pocket usually, so you're out of pocket. <laughs> Bull, call someone a slappy. Mike, you are a slappy, i got to tell you. <laughs> Tyvis, give us 30 seconds on Mike Vrabel. Mike Vrabel is one of the nastiest coaches I've ever had, man. That man, listen, there's some real classified stuff. That man almost got into it with some coaches on the coaching staff. Back Who? When I was, can't say no names. Oh. But he almost got into it, man. That man is the real deal. He's a he's a man's man, and that defense is going to be nasty having Mike out there. Oh, my goodness. The linebackers should be running through brick walls. But make sure you don't hip drop because you will get fined for it. But you know what? He's so good of a coach. He probably say I pay the fine. That's yeah. how that's how real Mike is. Yeah. Chris Lowry Go Bucks. says we got all these great coaches now, but I'm getting a sense it feels like when Malone and Peyton joined Shaq and Kobe and the Lakers, if they don't click, it'll be a bust. Vigilant Hawk says I'm not buying that you can't build a mixed use development on the lakefront. I live in Atlanta. The Braves and the Falcons did a similar thing on a similar footprint. Also. If it's a dome, it can be used 12 months, not just 10 days. Concerts. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know Atlanta well enough to compare the. Now you can't but. put restaurants and hotel and shopping on the lakefront when you got the Rock Hall right there. Yeah, what's the science? There's no right other there. space there. Not really. I mean, you could, Michael Maxwell yeah. says Burke Airport sits on a landfill, which is why nothing can be done with that land. Unfortunately, that sucks. Brook Park seems like the best way to go. And last but not least, Derek Waldmiller says, as a Browns fan from Buffalo, I have a feeling Brook Park will end up like Orchard Park here. For you guys, though, I just hope it doesn't have one road in and one road out like they did in Buffalo. No, no it's fairly accessible. The, they're, the spots that they're talking about. A lot of highways crisscrossing. 237 runs that right there, and it's right off 480. Obviously, 71 is close by. Yeah. So I think, I think the area is fine. I think they're going to do a lot with building that area up. Like, mm. it's... You know, it's got some shadiness to it now to kind of run down, but I, yeah. they'll build it up. Yeah. All right. And the last bit of news, which is going to lead us into our overtime topic here, Steve. You can take tag board full. HBO is not focusing on just one team for Hard Knocks this season. It'll focus on four teams in a division. It's a good way to shake it up. It's There's gotten no stale. way it, got stale. it can't be the AFC North, right? It has to be it the AFC North. It should be. North. I don't know how you get all four teams to agree. You have a hard enough time getting one team to agree. I how guess, do you get four? I guess maybe they're not spending as much time with each team. Maybe. That's or, how you do it. Or you force them. You know, yeah. aren't, aren't they forced to do it if they haven't been on? And uh, Yeah, there are rules where yeah. you can force some teams. But there's no way that, based on the current rules, that all four teams in the division are going to be in the same scenario. I mean, the AFC North is the most interesting division in football by far. It's the best division. It's interesting. Yeah. There's a lot of personality. There's a lot of rivalry. Um, so I think it makes a lot of sense. We'll I'd see. love it. That'd be fun. That would be a lot I of fun. I don't think there's any way Kevin Stefanski would willingly open the doors to a no. film crew coming in. No, no, no. <laughs> that, would be, that would be come from above his head to say, right, right, right. we're doing this. Yeah. What, uh, what division would you want outside of the AFC North? AFC oh, East. Which one got the Chiefs in it? The, the West. West. Also, one more note. We are yep. going to learn the fate of the Browns in week one by Thursday. That's when the NFL will announce the Brazil game. They are down between the Browns and the Packers, according to all reports, as who will be Philadelphia's week one opponent really? in Brazil. That game will be streamed on Peacock. However, 
it will also be streamed on TV locally. So if you live in Cleveland, yeah. you don't have to worry about having Peacock if the Browns And, and by game. the way, it's really not – people made such a big thing about the Peacock. Like, you could get it – I think Peacock allows you to get it free for a week. So if your team was on Peacock – Just sign up. You, you sign up, and then you cancel in a week. Yeah. Hey, no, what is it? By the way, I – Isn't it four ninety nine a month? It's very inexpensive. Well, that's with, with the commercials. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you got no problem I, with I read, that. <laughs> I read that, you know, that when that playoff game was on Peacock, that I think it was 75% of the people that signed up for Peacock stayed with them. Well, that's, their, that's why that's they do the it. Yeah. yeah. That's what they hope. Uh, now, a, do they stay with them or do they just forget to cancel? They forgot to cancel. Either way, they're getting the money. <laughs> I, know, I would bet at least half of those people just forgot to cancel, yes, if not yes. more. I think Peacock is the worst streaming service. It has almost nothing that I've watched Dr. one show Dr. there Death ever. Is all there. That's my, the only good show on there. My <laughs> oldest actually signed up for all the wrestling. He's a huge wrestling Yeah, that's fan. true. They got, uh, I they thought got they, all yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. The, they do have the WWE there. So if you're into wrestling. I actually used his account and watched some of the old school wrestling from when I was a kid. There you go. We'll see you on Overtime for the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. They got Peace. the old school over